because there was work in the house and there was work in the property. So I just wanted to see what was going on out there. There was work on the house? Yeah. Not in the last 20 years. Well, this work happened to be on the inside of the house. I don't know what was going on on the outside of the house. Um, so when I checked out the property, uh, it had, you know, new gravel roads. It looked like they were cleared. So there's a road straight down past the property, past another um, building, and then on up into the hill where there's a clearing, and it looks like a staging area for equipment or something like that. And then the road continues on to the fence, uh, where you most of the school people walk through and um, then there's a trail cut by some piece of machinery that went right next to the wetlands and uh, Mike said that that was just miscommunication and that's gonna be allowed to grow right back in uh, there was no damage there was no ground that was torn up but with all these activities I just wanted the commission to see it. I thought it was something that you wanted, might want to take a look at and just keep an eye on. Did a neighbor complain? I don't know who got, got the call because it was the building department in the first place. You know, I thought a neighbor had said they were moving boulders around. Or, okay. Well, I think there's that, that staging area looks like it's a lot of fill it's been built up and any of the brush that was cut to kind of um, <coughs> turn this thing back into what it was in the past was kind of thrown over the side so there was you know so that now there's more uh, fill added to one edge <coughs> of it uh, whether it's brush with things on top of it maybe some dirt on top of it so my opinion what happened was it's one of the elderly parents' house. They're not living there anymore. Um, there was always talk about how it looked in the past, but it hadn't been kept up, and so they just went out there and turned it back into what they've always were told it was, or maybe reestablished these roads and graded them out better. When when we were there at the top of that next plateau, so so the driveway goes down <coughs> and then it goes back up. It looked like there was some sort of tree house framed. Yeah, around that clearing around that Chuck that clearing. was talking about. Yeah. That clearing to me, I didn't, Between I didn't, two trees, I didn't, we didn't tree. trespass, but for looking yeah. through, through the, the fence. fence. Well, there was a tree house, but it yeah. was, that yeah. wood was definitely yeah. not brand new. It right. Was, yeah. It, it's yeah. Not, there was like that one looked like a play yard to me, that clearing, from yeah. what I could see through the fence. And it, and it was, and it was a clearing that was on the aerial photo, the satellite photo for the town. So it's not a new clearing. No. Um, I think going, for me, going to those site visits, it would be helpful to understand what the outline of that whole property is. Okay. I think, because I think the wetlands you're talking about are kind yeah. of off. Yeah, I don't even know where they are. We didn't really they, see They're, they're they maybe at a southern, yeah. Did well, you walk up the path that the school children's take? Well, yeah. you're gonna Terry go over a I stream, did. and if you yeah. look to your right, Terry and I it's did. up there. Yeah. yeah, it's up that. Yeah, it looked like the wetlands extended along that southern property boundary, but I didn't, I wasn't able to see how we're far that went, or even on the western side. So I think if we had a property, any sort of printout of a property line, was so there just any so flow in that stream? It didn't look like it was just really kind of muddy Still. more than anything else, just damp. Was it draining toward I didn't see some rain out, or was it draining back toward I think It was just, it's just damp earth, so there was no flow anywhere. You can see, you didn't I didn't really see any did. water, just kind of. Mm -hmm. Just where all the boards were in, because that's where it was. Yeah, there's a lot of makeshift boards going through those wetlands along that trail. Put the trail committee on it. <laughs> <laughs> That's uh, actually that's private property, so that's not the end of his uh, this gentleman's property. From what he says, he owns well beyond that fence and right down to some sort oh. of uh, zip line that's oh. in a tree, and he owns that area where that oh. zip line is and where that where that thing's hooked up. Then I'm really so that fence kind of throws everyone off. Yeah, didn't but because uh, I that's assume that was a property line, but it's not. It's according to Michael Hassan. Okay. And he would so he has land even further Way down. back, yeah, yeah. Almost the extent of the... Probably as far as the school goes down. Yeah, I think so. so I think so. Okay. Well, that'll be interesting for the next site visits. Um, any other questions?
questions or comments about that? Otherwise, I'm going to um, open, well, before I open the request for determination for, actually, are you here for Johnson Circle? No. No, okay. National Grid. National Grid, okay. But Walnut Street's here. Yep. Um, In, well. Would you like to announce? Yeah, I, I just, um, we're going to, the only thing we can do tonight, uh, the commission can close the hearing. But what, what are we talking about here? Uh, about Walnut Street. Walnut I'm just letting uh, yeah. someone in the audience here. know that we won't be signing anything so they don't sit around all night waiting for. Okay, so this is the uh, TAN's application for the drainage. Right. Head. Okay. Right, right. behind Walnut Street. Why would that um, it, it just wasn't prepared. There wasn't enough time to get it prepared. And um, so we didn't close the hearing at the last one because time is an issue with the conservation office because it's part time. And um, we'll I be signing at the it. next hearing. I thought it had been voted on. It had. We it approved had. it. We approved okay, it. So we just, happened? when, um, <coughs> if you don't mind, could Go I? Go ahead. Yeah, please. We approved yeah. the project, but then we have to have a document that states that we approved it and what conditions have to be met specifically. Hail ba uh, hail base. <laughs> now I can't say Hay it. bales <laughs> need to be placed here and you need to do it at this time of the year and, and all these other conditions. And typically what we do after we approve it and we discuss how it's going to be done, our administrator goes back to his office and writes all that down then we read it to make sure it reflects what we actually approved. Then we sign it and everything's already to go. Our administrator did not have the opportunity so to- So that's two more weeks. It's two more yeah. weeks and we have to continue the hearing again. No, you, could, you could close it and because I actually have it half finished. Okay, I move we close the hearing for- Well, it's a timed item. If it's not 720, you can't. Oh, I sorry. I was just doing that sorry. to make sure. Sorry, apologize, okay. Uh, so um, we have, we, we yeah. have to follow the, the times on the agenda. Right. We can't, so we can't get to something ahead of time. Just oh, for okay. your courtesy, just so that. All we're gonna do is close the hearing. We're not gonna be able to do anything else, but you're more than welcome to stay. It could be very exciting. Okay, <laughs> all right, we just wanted to let you know. Okay. Okay. Right. Well then, um, you should. and I don't know. I'm sorry. Um, well, the request for determination of applicability, I don't need it. Um, for uh, RDA 14-13, 10 Johnson Circle, map 32, lot 161, uh, Um We're going to take up that matter now. So, um, Chuck, we did a site visit. It was mosquito-y. It was dark. Oh, I got a bit on my Yep. We got, um, and it was not clear to us during the site visit where the resource area was exactly. Uh, but we de clearly identified two trees in the backyard that looked like that they wanted to cut or trim. And then um, a tree, a dead tree and a branch near the end of the cul-de-sac. Um, so that was four. And their permit. That would be three, right? No, there were no four. Two behind the house? Yes, two, two behind, behind the, the house. house. And then the one with the broken two. limb. And one right next to it. Yeah, so the broken limb and then the dead tree. They're right next to each other. At the the, end. Right the next dead to each tree. other. Oh, I thought the yeah. limb was from the dead tree. No. no. There's two of them. Okay. It was a dead limb from a live tree next to the dead tree. Do they want to take down the live tree or just the, the no, broken just the, limb? No, just the broken limb. Um, and then maybe two of the smaller trees that were, I mean, I don't know about this big around. What, yeah, that seem to be trees um, to the left and right of the house um, at the end of the circle, which is just at the edge of their property line. Um, they were clearly dead. To the left of the house, there was one that may have been just outside jurisdiction, but um, oh, we didn't it's, see it's not even on this this plan that they provided I think what was no they didn't mention no we didn't look at house. that I think that might have been outside but there's going to be one up in this area here oh. removed okay. and do we know where the resource area is I would have put it right at the retaining wall or within 
a few feet at the back. So the, all those trees are in the resource area? So where they have this arrow here, those, the trees they want to cut. She also says that she wants to cut 15 feet of these trees by the retaining wall. So I, I wanted, they're not here tonight, but I wanted to ask if that's along the wall or... Okay. Well, it all depends upon where the resource area is. I think that's a suggestion of her, the arbor she had talked to who said, he just recommended you just clear all that out. I yeah. They were saying they wanted to do 15 feet along there, but that was more like the tree guy's suggestion. Yeah, he said those trees were just going to grow up. They're all hanging over. They're all lurching into the open space. There's only two big sunlight. ones. Sunlight, yeah. There's, the, there's two middle ones that are fairly big, and they're overhanging. But yeah. the little guys are all small and not doing much. But there are two that overhang towards the roof, which is a squirrel access for them. I but, think. Well, so you think that retaining wall is the boundary of the resource area? I thought it was fairly close, and this is where it's marked on here with the overlay from Math GIS. Hmm. So. You know, every time I talk about this project with either the resident or with you, or when I look at this plan, the number of trees and the location of them seems to change. So it seems to me we don't have enough sufficient information to know which trees are going to be cut, trimmed, or otherwise to approve this plan. The right. Or exactly where the resource area is, because typically, unless a tree is obviously dead, and or it's an immediate threat to a, a structure where people live, we don't allow cutting in a resource area. So those, those small trees, a lot of that work can be considered trimming and necessary, as a matter of fact, because it's, they're on the other side of the wall, they're leaning over the wall and towards the house. I think we mentioned them, but they could trim those, the ones that were close to the house. They, yeah, they yeah. could definitely they were do a lot of trimming, but there's some areas where you're going to cut a lot of a tree, a lot, or most of the tree down, more than 50%, if you were trimming what's leaning over the retaining wall. Okay. I. I move we continue this. <laughs> yeah, I, I further uh, second, clarification. Or I'm, I move we continue it. And yeah, if, if the trees are flagged with a code that says either they're going to be cut down or they're going to be trimmed, trimmed. up. Exactly. That would be a big help. Exactly. And also find out where the, where the resource yeah. really is. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We may have missed yeah. this yeah. yeah, so we'll put that. So if you give me a few minutes at some point, I can run down and give them a call and see if someone's home to come down and. Well, we uh, didn't. We oh, yeah. didn't they said they were going to try and make it. They said they were going to try and make it. Um, but did, didn't you tell them about marking the trees or asking them to mark the trees? I did. I did. I said. I said. Well, what I said to them was, if if we were to, if if you had not already provided a permit and you were starting from scratch, I would have advised you up front to identify which trees you wanted cut or trimmed with different colored flagging so that we could clearly see it. Do you want to just give them a call? So they, their were phone the, number. they were there? Yeah, we talked the, about The there. husband and wife were, were both there. there. As were the mosquitoes. But they had a pretty vague idea of what they wanted to do. Do you want me to... Uh, well, what are, we gonna, what are we going to tell them? Not to bother not coming. Right. Well, I can call them. Right. Well, they've already missed their time. Right? Well, yeah. Well, you've continued the hearing. That doesn't We've continued. mean it has to be so the next week. It can be to the end of the hearing, the end of the meeting we're in right That's now. That's true. If well, they show we up, we can brief them. We haven't voted on the uh, continuation. We've so there, moved. There's a motion and a second. Is there, well, is the, was there a second? I'll, I'll second. second. All right, Terry. It, All right. It's chair. You're not supposed to make a motion or a second. You're oh, I think to. I can. You can. It's chair. You can, but it's typically somebody else makes it. You and I made the motion at the same time, though. Right. So <laughs> I was thinking if you made the motion, I'll okay. second. And go ahead. Sure. All right. So all those in favor? Okay. We are going to continue this. And is Chuck going down to make that right phone there. call? Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. All right. So our next one is at Pleasant Street. We can start that. Yeah. Since they're here. Place yeah. things up a Let's directional do that. drill. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Just please uh, introduce yourself and the project, please. Uh, my name is Eric Ford. I'm an environmental consultant with Lucas Environmental. Okay. With me tonight is Amanda Neville. She's with Concrete Engineering and Scientists. And okay. Right. Uh, who's proposing to install 710 linear feet of uh, gas main along Pleasant Street. Uh, the purpose of the work is basically to improve the reliability 
of the system in advance of the reconstruction of Pleasant Street, which is which is coming up. I'm not sure the timeline for that, but they're trying to get the utilities fixed before the the road gets repaved. Good idea. Is it is it, is it a refurbishment, like or is it that there isn't a gas utility in there this is, area? There is there is a gas utility currently. Yeah, it's very old. And is it, it needs cast to be iron? Yes. Ooh. Yeah, it's ancient. Okay. Um, so they're looking to upgrade to an eight-inch plastic gas main. There's going to be two of them at set of two different pressures, but they're going along the same same uh, alignment. Um, a portion of this work, uh, as you as you are aware, there is this man-made stream that runs across Pleasant Street in the vicinity of um, Wilson. For, excuse me, I'm sorry to interrupt. For just for the sake of um, people watching on TV and the public to mind putting it up over by the, uh, yeah, up on, <coughs> see the wooden, oh, sure. any, any one of those, just so that um, people can see it. Thanks. Because we have a copy here. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks. All right. So there's going to be 186 foot plus or minus horizontal directional drill. Um, between Osborne Ave and Wilson Street. Um, there's not enough cover currently between the bottom of the roadway and the top of the culvert to get the gas main through, even though it's there right now. So we're going to have to go under. And so there's going to be, uh, starting just by, uh, starting at Osborne Ave, there's going to be an entry. And then at Wilson Street, there's going to be an exit point. And they're going to br bring in the drill rig, drill rig's going to um, bore a 24 inch diameter hole. Then they're going to pull an 18 inch casing pipe back through that bore hole. And uh, then they're going to install the conduit within that two, two. casing pipe. Yeah, there's going to be two. Eight Is that inch. 18 inch uh, conduit plastic also? Uh, no, I believe it's going to be metal. Okay. Um, and the invert of the culvert that carries that stream through under Pleasant Street, that's going to be a minimum of 10 feet above the top the of, crown of, of the, the crown of the casing pipe. Um, so we're not, we're in the buffer zone. We're not within um, bordering land subject to flooding, which is present, but the elevation of the roadway is, is about a foot higher than the base flood elevation there. Um, so you're really left with the 100 foot buffer zone to bank, and then there's some fringing um, BBW as well. All work is temporary in existing disturbed areas. Everything's going to be returned to pre-existing conditions upon completion of work. What are you doing with the old line? It will probably be abandoned in place or removed later on during the reconstruction effort. Can, um can you just sort of go into a little bit more detail of what sort of um, waste get generated during this drilling process? I'm not yeah, so familiar with Yeah, there is drilling fluid involved. Yep. And, and typically that is stored within the machine. There's a device called mud pit. And um, the, uh, the, the, the drilling fluid will be pumped back into that pit. Solids will be separated and they can re recycle that drilling over and over again, and then eventually they'll they'll uh, pump it all out. So all fluids are contained. Correct. But the excavated material will be taken off site. The excavated material will. Well, I should ask you that question. Um, it depends. If they don't, if whatever they they dig out or, or trenched out um, doesn't look funky, doesn't smell funky, whatever, um, you know, they'll they'll lay fresh sand wherever they can below the below the piping. Um, and then on top of it, they'll reuse as much as they can, as long as it's not, like I said, it, there's no evidence of contamination. Anything excess, they'll just load into a truck and they'll take off site. And, and you're not gonna dewater it on site? Because it's gonna be wet. Yeah. If, it, if it is yeah. dewatered, it can be um, pumped into a truck and taken out that way or stored in that manner and, and de dewatered in that fashion instead of having a actual dewatering basin because we really don't have the space for it. Okay, are you, uh, will, it, will, uh, will you accept that um, 
there will be no dewatering on site. All excess material will be carried off site, and then if you find that doesn't work, you can come back. Are you okay with that? That's acceptable. Yeah, I would say so. It's obviously it's hard until they actually sure. get in there and, and do it to know uh, what's going on. But obviously, if, if they get into anything that's really wet, typically um, they'll call us because we we're the Conoco is the environmental consultants for Boston Gas Company. So typically, when they do all these jobs, anytime they encounter anything strange, they should just stop work and call us. Um, but we can certainly make that a condition that we give them before they start the work to say, hey. If you guys find that dewatering is necessary, stop, call us, and let us. Do you have a standard dewatering technique that we could say that if you do need to dewater, that's what you use, or would it just depend on how it depends on It depends on the project. Right. Um, a lot of the times, um, at least the gas lines that I've worked on, um, and these are just in your typical four foot trenches, um, if we find that we're getting a lot of water into the trench, we'll just bring a, a Cusco truck out with a hose and just stick the hose in the trench and suck out the water and wherever it it's coming site. in and carry it off site, yeah. Yeah, that, that would obviously, from our standpoint, be the best thing to do. Sure. And there so, will. so Chuck, when you write that, if you could just say no dewatering on site, and if it becomes necessary, they have to contact us. I have, um, I don't have that in this now, but I have, if that's the only condition I have, everything else that's standard usually put in so let's offer it to the commission we could um, if there's no more questions there, were there any more questions or comments I, I, I was wondering about putting silt sacks in you're going to be generating a lot of um, material coming out silt sacks in the storm uh, looks like some storm drain right there uh, it, there's one on Wilson Street also uh, so is our proposed in there okay yeah. Any chance we can get that uh, intermittent stream cleaned up? There's a deposit of uh, sand right at the end of one of the inverts there. <laughs> I don't have the authority to, to say yay or nay to that. <laughs> All right, well, hopefully you don't cause any problems because that's on my list. <laughs> <laughs> I'll keep that in mind. Um, I, just, I just had a quick question. Just curious about the technique of that metal pipe that's going to be, um, metal casing that's going to be back through Mm -hmm. The drilling. Um, I think it's high density, probably up on the test. Oh, is it HDP? Yeah, yeah. yeah. HDP. Oh, okay. You said you were pulling an 18 a metal casing. Oh, yeah, no. Back no. through. Well, I, well, whatever material that is, um, does that come kind of pre curved or is it going to be stressed? Well, they come in segments. So With it, a certain flexibility to yeah. it. Because I'm just wondering with the curvature of it. Is no, it putting I mean, it, it looks distorted because the vertical is at okay, okay, the plan. Okay. It's going to be, you know, gradual. It's going to be okay. more gradual than, okay. than it looks. Yeah, I mean, he's starting at about three feet on either end and going down to about 12 feet. It's 176 feet, you said. Yeah. So 80 feet, so four feet over 80. And HDPE can handle that kind of I bending. I rely on them. If not, yeah. the cam's going to blow up. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, no, and I, I'm sure they've got plenty of experience, you know, with this type of uh, project. I just uh, was wondering about cracking or breaking of that, of that uh, outer protective pipe. That's all. Um, okay, any more questions or comments? Any questions? Do you have any questions? Or? No. Um, I just have a quick comment. I found it useful. <coughs> You included some of the um, regulations, whatever, in context with what you're proposing. Sure. It's a good, mm -hmm. good thing to have in there. Okay. Um, without any more discussion, mm -hmm. is there a motion? I move that we issue the uh, negative determination with the conditions. Uh, that we discussed tonight about the dewatering and uh, other condi standard conditions that Chuck has in the uh, determination. Okay, and I'll second. All those in favor? Opposed? No? Okay. And Chuck, you have this prepared? I do. So, great. Get that signed. 
Thanks for coming in. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, are you yep. trying to do it this uh, this fall or summer? I would likely think they're gonna they're gonna want to do it as soon as possible. I'm not I'm not sure of the time frame. Um, depending on how long it's gonna take them, and depending on uh, when the street opening permit season closes for them, it could be put off. But I know they're they're trying to get as much of these done as they can. So. I'm not entirely sure though. All right. Sounds good. Okay. Thank, you. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Thank you. Okay. Um, so we have um, another resident from Walnut Street. I just wanted to let you. Well, all right. Let's let's get into the notice of intent for uh, Green Street. Actually, that is. I don't need to open that. That's continued from earlier. And again, you can you can close this also. I had already Plus. contacted the owner Close, and the consultant and told them that we would be signing this at the next meeting. And they were okay with that. 164 Green Street? Yep. Um, this gentleman was going to start his project next year. So okay. I move we, is this right, continue the... No, no, we can close it and you know, I have 21 days to uh, we gotta sign. we got to open it before we can close it. Anybody have a script? Do you happen to have a script? Sure. I can wing it. Oh, I probably have one. Sorry. Oh, wait. Oh, do I? Oh, I do that. <clears throat> Sorry. I apologize. <laughs> I was going to say. <laughs> Somebody. Okay, well then, uh, let's, um, let's reopen the public hearing for notice of intent 270 What? 164 Green Street, Map 17, Lot 216, Brenner. Um, that's reopened and being conducted concurrently under the authority of the Massachusetts Wetlands Protection Act. Massachusetts General Laws, Chapter 131, Section 40 is amended and the Reading General Bylaws, Section 5.7. Um, the applicant, if present, will discuss elements of his or her proposal. The commission will receive reports from its administrator. Um, we will address questions and comments to the applicant. The public will be given an opportunity to ask questions of the applicant, which should be directed to the chair. There's an attendance sheet at the doorway of the meeting room. Please sign in if you haven't already. And at this point, please introduce yourself. Um, Chuck, starting with you. Uh, Chuck Durani, Competition Administrator. Terry Selly. Anika Scanlon, Chair. Jamie Moore. Madam Chairman, I move we close the hearing on 164 Green Street. Okay. There's a motion and it's seconded. Any discussion? I can just tell you that uh, Bill uh, emailed me and he asked that it was to be closed tonight. Okay. Uh, no further discussion. Okay. All those in favor? Okay. That is closed. Um, and uh, I so. think we've had a record for the short term. <laughs> I think so, too. <laughs> All right. Well, then we'll deal with that um, order of conditions at the next meeting. Then let's move yes, on yeah. to how is it possible that something could run away from me so quickly? We're going much too fast today. <laughs> <laughs> so um, now, since it is past 720, mm -hmm. we're going to discuss the public hearing for Notice of Intent 270-0630, 152-156 Walnut Street, Map 4, <laughs> Lots 101 and 102, the DPW Engineering Division. That is now reopened, being conducted <coughs> concurrently under the authority of the Massachusetts Wetlands Protection Act. Massachusetts General Laws, Chapter 131, Section 40 is amended in the Reading General Bylaws, Section 5.7. Um, the applicant will present the proposal. The commission will receive reports from its administrator. The commission will address questions and or comments to the applicant. The public will be given an opportunity to ask questions of the applicant, which should be directed to the chair. Please give your name and address before your comments and or questions are presented. And let's introduce ourselves, starting with Kim. Mr. Secretary. Bill Finch. Jamie Moore. Anika Scanlon, Chair. Terry Selly. Allison Stanger. Chuck Tarani, Conservation Administrator. 
Okay, um, so George is not here for this. Was there any further information about this project? No. I, I, just, just to comment, um, th this is an important project. There are a lot of neighbors that are concerned, interested, and in, in, um, they have taken a lot of time to show up at this meeting. I think, in, in my opinion, getting that order of conditions drafted should have, have had a priority certainly a priority over the RDA for the gas pipeline, which doesn't even have its street permit yet. So if, if Chuck, if you could give it priority to make sure we have it done in two weeks, I would, I would appreciate it. Yeah, it, it was just my understanding that that's to you, you set the queue by not closing that hearing and the Green Street hearing. Those were the two you chose not to put a priority on so that's why we're we've come up tonight without them available to sign that, that, that's a good point i think we should then at our meetings give chuck some direction as far as priority to to, to draft and, and execute these things that will i think help chuck and help the citizens too yeah um at this point, um, that's all. Is that all that's really holding up this particular permit? Is just the drafting of that yeah, order. Yeah. Um, so there's no additional information. Um, now, since the last meeting about this project, didn't we receive an additional letter we from did. a resident about this particular project? We did. Um, and a request from her to. Um, it was an email. Expedite. Um, just to motivate the appropriate departments. To, to get motion going on going. the project itself. Mm -hmm. Chuck, do you have any understanding about the project schedule from engineering? Where they're putting it on their priority list? No, I don't. And it, it, <laughs> I'm just I can't wondering. speak for them. I, no, I, I know. I don't think I'm that... I mean, George had no need for it to be finished, the order of condition tonight. So he was very, he was pretty okay with waiting okay. for however long it took. So, okay. um, and certainly the two week delay was fine with him. Okay. I don't know if he can get to it this year. You know, I thought they had some, asked some questions at the hearing, but I can't remember what George said for an answer about when it's going to start. So, okay. I think he said he was going to do it with the internal resources. He was hoping to, yeah. He said he might have to farm it out, but he, he really wasn't committed either way. Yeah, so anything going out to bid is not going to be very quick. No, yeah. it's not. No, it's not. Okay. There might be a project for next year based on, on that. Okay. Okay. Are there any questions? Yes, sir. Go ahead. Please, just for the sake of the record. Okay. This project's been going on for five years. Uh, town engineer George knows how important it is to Mrs. Fitzpatrick, who gets water all the time. And now he's telling us that he didn't know that there was a priority involved here. No, I'm sorry. Uh, this I was told is it not wasn't a priority. By this whom? By what the actions of this committee was la at the last meeting, which was we asked George if it was needed. We didn't close the hearing leaving it open uh, so it could be prepared later. What do you mean by later? I mean, that's a lot of what we did was kind of conservation speak. George understood it. We understood it. But it didn't need to be prepared based on our actions at the last meeting. And it was clear that that's what was going to happen. The Five years. A meeting has, the hearing has to be closed and the order needs to be issued. And at that point, when those two words are said, you have 21 days to issue it. It can't happen until then. We were under the impression we are coming down here tonight to watch you people Science. sign the long overdue papers. So where is the miscommunication? I just think it's, it's, it's what happens between a committee that uses uh, you know, terminology that gets mixed up by just regular lay people. And you know, Walnut Street went through a scenic road project 12, 15 years ago. Mr. Hackenblecker fought us for two years. We finally won. And then the next night, he's on the front of the 
Reading Chronicle. Yay, I did a great job. Wow. We're going to go through this again. It no, this, we, years. this you project is Figure out what finished. to do with downtown. 15 years. But your, your project is finished. They're, yeah, sure they're going to close it tonight. Yeah. George can do what he wants knowing that, that there's going to be no more changes. Uh, Grace, just got to my understanding that this isn't an expensive project. From, from the, in the beginning, they told us it was just a couple of thousand dollars. My understanding was that there are funds that we get charged on our water bill to take care of all these issues around town. Wow. Is that true? Uh, I, I, we don't know if it's coming out Am of the I water bill or the stormwater enterprise fund. We don't know the answer. Well, I understood there was a fund that, that there, we there is a, there is a stormwater the enterprise fund. To handle all these water issues around yeah. town. Yeah. And um, because water, Reading has a high water table, there's yeah. no question. Yeah. You know, but uh, I'm confused about what's going to happen from here. Is this going to go on until next fall, next spring, what's next well, winter? Where what is we don't set a time limit after we've approved the project. It okay. is, the permit is valid for three years. I mean, your job is finished here at the Conservation Commission, but you probably still need to advocate for yourself and your project with George and the town, telling them to get this on the top of their Okay, shape. that I can do. That I will because do. Because, we, 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 I'm sorry. Oh, I was going to say, no, you can probably say it is just it as gonna eloquently. Is it going to be closed tonight? And is we, it gonna be we're going to close the hearing tonight, or I, I anticipate we will, and then we will have your order signed two weeks from tonight. Engineering is clear to go ahead with the program from our standpoint, and as, um, as Chuck said, it, if you, you can talk to George and the Board of Selectmen to put pressure on them to complete the project, that's your best avenue. We unfortunately yeah, I have very that. little success putting pressure on do. George. Yeah. Well, and, and we do not have the, we're not the managers of that project. Right, I understand that. I you know? understand that, that DPW has to do it. I, I know that. And engineering. So yeah. Why are you saying it takes two weeks? The permit, the approval to do the work within the wetlands is what our business is. It takes two weeks to sign a piece of paper? Well, the paper to has to finish to being drafted. Out. I thought it was going to be drafted up by t tonight's meeting. That's the impression I had when I left the meeting a couple weeks ago. Well, that, that didn't That's happen. That's the impression George gave us. That didn't happen, but it will happen within the next two weeks because by closing the, closing the hearing, according to state law, we have to have it drafted in, in 21 days. Okay. So the, that, that puts the nail to the call. Okay. Any other questions? No? Can somebody guarantee us that this project will be done by 2020? I can't. <laughs> That's up to George. We, we're not funding the project. We're not running the project. You know. Uh, we can guarantee you they'll have a wetlands permit before yep. 2020. That we will yep. guarantee you. Yep. Yep. So I move, uh, unless there are other comments. Any other comments from the public? No? Okay. I move we close the hearing on uh, Walnut Street. The uh, two seventy zero six three zero. I second that. Okay, all those in favor. Okay. So um, we'll be signing that. Can I say that with? I can say with, that with confidence. With certainty, with, uh, with certainty yeah. we are with signing certainty. this at <laughs> the next meeting. Um, no. No. <laughs> so um, thank you for coming out. Two weeks is fourteen days. So. Is it going to be 21 or 14 days? You know, it, I, 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 would, the I would tell you that go to George immediately we already, we tomorrow did. and okay. tell him it's been closed. Yeah, there will okay. be no more changes. Okay. He, well, the, okay. he knows. I'll, I'll send to the head of DPW. Yeah. He, yeah. sure. he has all the details he needs. We didn't make any changes. What okay. he proposed the last right. time, we're good to go with. Okay, great. Thank so, you. Thank so you. the next he meeting. Have to wait. So the next meeting is September 10. And you're going to sign the We're paper. signing it. <laughs> we're signing it. We're, we're now locked in to do it. Okay. So. Thank you. Okay, thanks for coming out. Thank you. All right. Okay. Okay. Um, can I just ask for, uh, for the sake of what, what business you're here for? 
either of you? Well, I think I'm late. I, I thought it was 7.30, not 7 o'clock. I was here for the RDA 2014-13, removing six dead trees around the property on Jonathan Snow. Oh, okay. We continued that. We, we, uh, we talked about it. We talked about it earlier, but we continued it just in case uh, well, you showed here up. Here comes the so, uh, so how about we uh, reopen that one? So why don't we why don't we take up that matter now? Oh, and before we get to that, actually, can I? Can Thanks, I? Um, Karen Herrick, um, Mike Seller. I was at 16 Barney, and he's just anxious that that okay. work conditions be closed. So I told him I'd start that Thank you. Okay. So, okay. So, okay. Let's take Thanks care for of letting that me know. Since we've already missed the time for the old. Okay. Yeah. I don't have any objection. Um, so we'll jump ahead in the old new business to 16 Varney Circle. Uh, Chuck, I understand you've prepared the certificate of compliance for that. We, uh, we did a site visit. Um, lots of trees were planted. Um, I think many more than the two that were. More like 200. Um, you know, one of the, I think the resident's father was put, put a number of trees out there. And um, it looks stable. It looked good. Any other comments about the site? Yeah. Site looked in good condition. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So no, no uh, shopping carts in the wetland. No, no. no. Trash. It looked nice. No. And I, I like that driveway oh, portion that too. There was. I don't know if you saw it. Twenty years old. Yeah. So I'm amazed at what they're shaping. Yeah, some good shape. It's, it's really nice to see something so friendly to infiltration. There. I'm not sure what it's like in the winter, but. <laughs> when I never saw the water come over across there, and it was wet. I started going out there in March, and you can see lots of water in the woods before that stuff grows in, but it never ever came across the Oh, good. Driveway. Yeah, he said it never flowed across the road. Yeah, yeah that's think. what they said. Yeah. Well, that's good. Heavy rains. Okay. It's it's all set. I think. Did I miss that you guys made a motion and voted on this? I mean, oh, I move we issue. Oh, go ahead, Terry. I've moved enough tonight. <laughs> no, you go ahead. I might just jump in here, you guys. Go ahead, Terry. Did I just move we approve this? Or we issue a certificate. We issue a certificate of compliance. COC. Oh, certificate of compliance. I move we uh, issue a certificate of compliance for City and Varney Circle um, 270 uh, 4560. I'll second. All those in favor? Okay, opposed, none. Unanimously approved. We're going to issue this, sign it, and. He's planning on coming tomorrow. Is that the right time to come and get it? To come and get it? Uh -huh. I, uh, you need more time? No, that should be fine. Uh, it does need to be recorded. Mm -hmm. um, can he can he show up when? And then we need proof of that recording, and then then we're all set. Uh, should he come afternoon time, or he's out? He's coming from Acton. That's why. Is that awesome. Acton? Yeah. Yeah. Tomorrow's Thursday. You're out here late, right? Oh. No, no, it's fine. I'll, I can uh, just get this ready tonight. Um, yeah, his handwriting, I thought it said Alton. <laughs> oh. I was almost going to oh. call him, but I can change that. That's not on the Oh, okay. Uh, he lives in Acton. Yeah. 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 He mentioned that at the site visit. Yeah, um, he, he said he comes when it snows. He comes from Acton oh, the to shovel yeah. his father's sidewalk. Yeah. Yeah. I wish, I wish I had something like that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He wouldn't yeah. come from his bedroom. Not, eat, not <laughs> to snow blow the, or plow it. Just right. right. So yeah, this should be ready. Um, I'll finish it off tonight before I go and just put it in the pickup box. Okay. So you can just come to uh, the inspectional services and I'll be ready. Okay. Well, thanks very much. Okay. Appreciate it. Thank you. Okay then, let's um, let's get back to. Uh, I don't have to reopen because it's a request for determination. So let's get back to a request for determination, fourteen thirteen. We continued it from earlier this evening. Um, I think I think the gist of what we were talking about earlier was that um, we weren't entirely sure how many trees and exactly where those trees were located. So. Would you like to? Yeah, well, there were the two dead ones that I think we were, I think everybody understood which ones those were, right? The, the ones in the back. The ones in the back, the two dead yeah. ones in the back. I think those were 
that was understood. Okay. Yeah. Um, and the um, there are so there are some, we we had somebody come out and take a look at the area, and it was suggested to us that we take out um, the smaller at least at least I mean I don't know if he meant most or all or but the smaller saplings that are, thank you for calling me by the way. <laughs> um, that's my house, okay. Yep. So there's a wall, a stone wall that runs back like this. I guess it's like right about here. Yeah, there's a stone wall. Um, and these are all really large trees and underneath those trees are really, are small saplings, you know, like the size of my forearm or arm up here or something like that, um, that are right, right, right up next to that stone wall and growing out towards the house because they're trying to get to the light. So it was suggested to us that we take those out because they're only going to continue to grow, get bigger. Um, we've already, this year, spent a couple thousand dollars on that wall getting it repaired because there are so many trees that are sort of pushing up against it. There are a lot of the, um, a lot of them we sort of see coming out like part of the plant is on one side and part of the plant is like coming out into our garden on the other. So I think the roots are doing some damage on that wall. Um, so we were told that it would be a good idea to take those saplings out. We, be, we, we don't know which ones are, if somebody wanted to tell us which ones we could take out then that would be fine. Um, so that was it. I think that was the part that was kind of in question, right? The saplings that are down there? Yeah, and, and you're going to remove them along the wall, not out into... Not out. Okay. Not, not this way. The wall runs, like it actually starts like down here somewhere, I think, runs through, but it, it runs close to house, like over here. So we would just be taking the saplings that were next to the wall, just on the other side of the wall out here. So you're talking maybe three or four feet or two or three feet, just the first bunch of them? Or yeah, like whatever the roots are. it's about like that. Yeah. I'd say it's about two, two feet, two or three feet maybe. Well, there, yeah. there are two medium-sized ones that are really large, and they're the ones that are hanging over towards your house. Those we just need to cut back. Like just trim them. Those we just need to cut back. I mean, it's, um, I mean, everybody knows it's it's costly to have the guys come out and do it. So, we if we're gonna when, when we first moved into the house, we, we cut back and said, okay, well let's see how everything grows. We didn't want to take too do too much, um, and it's been a couple of years now. So instead of just cutting back, that's why it was suggested us take the saplings out because it's going to be every year taking these things down and taking these things down. Yeah, we're only talking about like, really, it's just the ones that are next to the wall, running along the wall, not anything back out into the, you know, back out towards this area. Okay, so um, let me ask. So the, um, so you see how your lot is sort of like a triangle? Um, sort of the bottom part of the, the mm -hmm. that small linear segment off yeah. the cul-de-sac. Yeah. There was a dead tree there and then a dead branch there. We should just forget about that. Okay. <laughs> so <laughs> so this part, I think we should just you forget You want to forget about, about those? Okay. Okay. I mean, it doesn't, it, it doesn't look nice and it's just we've been seeing it hanging there and I think we thought this is a process. <laughs> so we should put everything that we could possibly think yeah. that we would ever want to do on there. Um, but you know, I honestly don't even know how a tree cutting person would get down there to cut that. You'd you'd have have to, to have it drop. You'd have to come in with a crane. It'd be very, very expensive. <laughs> yeah, I yeah. don't really. We, we, it's, it's not terribly important to us to do that. Okay. And I mean, really, it looks a lot better now anyway because it's all overgrown. There was some talk about that dead tree on the left side of the house. Is there anything between yours and the other property? I don't remember right. anything dead on that side. Right I don't remember. Right up in we the didn't didn't go over oh, there. I just didn't. I don't. I don't remember. I think maybe you said we did talk about this over here. Do you, Do you remember it? I thought there was a tree out there. Yeah, I thought that there would have been one of the There is a tree there. That's probably. That's probably we wouldn't know if it's actually our neighbors or ours. 
because that's a pretty small piece of land there. So, and that's not anything that we're really concerned about because it's not going to, it's probably far enough from the house. There's a really, really, really big tree right in front of the house, but I mean, there's you know a huge tree that's right here, but um, everything else on this side kind of pales in com comparison. It's and it's all set back. There's, I think that it might be over in that other. You know, our, our neighbors. I, I'm not concerned about that. Is is that lot line to the north of you really a long sliver lot line? This, like this, this, this yeah. Sliver. Or is yeah. That, or is that a? I think so. that. Oh. I think that's it. That's how it goes like that. I know. There's been a lot of questions <laughs> when I first moved in, and I saw something happening. I actually thought that the triangle was shifted a little bit and came out like this way. And somebody over here was doing something, and I said, "Oh, sorry, I, I think that that's our." Me. Oh, was it? I think that that's us. And he said, "No, no, no, it's not you." That's so. That, that's got to be a very difficult was, lot line to keep track yeah. of back it's there. Totally, well, it's totally felt grown in, so you yeah, can't really see you it. can't tell anything. We're actually we're gonna I, we're supposed to have the surveyor come out and mark it again, so that should make yeah. everything easier. Um, yeah, that little. Luckily, our neighbor that has that little sliver doesn't really think that much of it. So if we mow our lawn a little bit over to the left or the right, he doesn't really care. Yeah. 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 So, so at this point, let me just kind of get a sense of what you're requesting. Mm -hmm. So it sounds like there's two trees behind the house, and the two I'm going to describe are the two I understand. So people, everybody speak up if, if that's not what you understand. So there is one clearly dead tree um, that's pretty much in the middle of your backyard out, in, out into the resource area, into the woods. Um, there is a, a kind of a two-limbed, kind of a two-headed birch mm -hmm. that has a big scar in it mm -hmm. right next to your wall. Mm -hmm. And that's the second dead tree mm -hmm. that you're talking about? Mm -hmm. Right, that's like a dark colored birch yeah, tree. Yeah, I'm not sure it's totally dead, but it's not but real it's healthy. Not real no. healthy. Um, so that's what you're calling sort of the second dead tree. Yes. Um, and then between that birch and maybe your driveway. Yes. You the driveway edge. Maybe you want to. What you're hoping to do is clear the three feet of trees at the foot of the stone mm -hmm. wall. Yes which who knows how many little trees that is. Um, Some of them are so small, I mean, yeah. Yeah, I think. Um, and there's also the trimming of those two larger trees. Yes. The ones that are hanging over towards the roof. Right, not, the, not the Near the severing, garage. but the trimming of the limbs yeah. from those trees. There are two trees, I think they're maples yeah. about this big in the middle of all those saplings. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, those are pretty much touching the house. Um, okay. We had some problems, I think I mentioned, with some flying squirrels and stuff heading their way yeah. into the house. So somehow that comes up, all that comes up to six or five trees because we're forgetting about this dead one over here. I honestly, I can't think of... Taking dead I'm two I'm not, trees, I, trimming two trees, and then a bunch of sap is what I... Taking well, down two trees, trimming, trimming the branches, trees. the tall branches on two trees, and, and removing three place. feet of saplings from that wall area is what you're asking for. I just want to clarify this. That, that sounds like what I'm asking for. I, I feel okay. a little like maybe I might not have been there when Charles and my husband were walking around the house, and if there was another dead tree on the other side, I can't. I just wasn't. I think my husband might have been with you, so mm -hmm. I but he was there and saw the land during the day, so. All right. I'm still wondering where the wetlands are. Well, yeah. like, okay, now that we know That's what the question. scope of work is, what's the resource area? Chuck, would you mind reiterating what your understanding of it well, for the sake of that? Okay. I think if we, you know, just look in this area here and it looks like hardwood kind of in that area. So when I was there, here's the wall, and I would say, my memory was that it was fairly close. Um, so if we're trying to beat the 25 foot area, I don't think there's that's available, but it could be anywhere from five feet off the wall to 
right at the wall. You know, maybe maybe ten feet off the wall or right at the wall. Yeah. I, I don't know, but you know, we have this. You know, pine start out here, you know, down and through that area. Um, what's the significance of that? So the significance of that is, if it's wetlands, if the wetland limit is at the base of your wall, mm -hmm. then our bylaw, well, and our regulations. Um, set up a, a distance between yeah. that wetland line yeah. and um, like lawn area. And what, what our regulations call for is a 25 foot zone um, right. uphill from that wetland. Yeah, I guess I was, I was wondering vegetation. what the significance of the pines was. You're just cause you was pines cool. usually draw, uh, grow in dry areas. Oh. And it, they're just oh. an indicator, it's not I see. Fail safe. Okay. Yeah. But no. So, so fine. Maples oh, see, yeah. usually grow. No <laughs> it's like our house is like right in the middle. <laughs> yeah. I, I mean, you know, also take into consideration that we have a wall that's costing money to repair. It's already established. There's a lot of small, there's a lot of small um, woody material out there. And I think if, if um, there could be some. <coughs> some area that can be used as maintenance. I don't know three feet, but um, if you, if it needs to be maintained and you need to keep the roots out of it and you're grabbing these things once a year, so it is definitely maintenance instead of waiting three or four or five years until they grow up, that, that could make a difference. Um, well, we, we typically don't allow maintenance in the um, zone of natural vegetation. If it's already lawn, you know, we don't object to people continuing mm -hmm. to protect their lawn. But if it's natural vegetation, we don't allow maintenance in that plain pathway. Well, what is that stone wall made out of? Is so it field stone? <laughs> yeah, very old. I mean, is it's it mortared together? No. no. Is it loose? It just sort of. It's well built, whatever it's, it is. It's nice. It's really nice. But they're just big rocks yeah. on well, top of each other. That could be. Yeah, that's that doesn't have to be a professional job, I guess, if things started to fall over. But I mean, what was the spirit of allowing that in the first right. place to let it fall down, or was there an anticipation that maybe something needed to be done just on the other side? In some places, that's a retain. It seems as if it's a retaining wall. I mean, it's not just yeah. rock, and then it's right. it's retaining. So if that that's wall goes, yeah. it's holding up the slope for your driveway. Yes, yeah, it's a two uh, yeah. good drop. Yeah, yeah, it's. That needs to be maintained. Yeah, it, yeah. it, it yeah. does. Otherwise, you're going to lose part of your driveway. <laughs> yeah. um, but but how much growth in in on the downhill side would undermine the the structural stability of that wall? I mm. I don't know. You know, where's the balance between maintenance, <coughs> you know, selective pruning and trimming of the wetland plants mm. and I, um, maybe it, it would be good to um, go out and revisit exactly where that wetland, seeing that wetland line, yeah. verifying that, because um, if it really is at the base of that wall, then we have to do a Did the most have to be something that would be damaged the wall? Yeah, yeah, there was a lot of Japanese knotweed there. Yeah, there was a lot of Japanese knotweed. They like so, that. You like, yeah, it's like that well, was cover. Right. Yeah. <laughs> it doesn't bother us. You, yeah. Well, you don't have to do much to maintain that. No. no. I mean, but it does yeah. take over. It's true. If you don't it does take it. over. I mean, um, you know, we could consider, since that's an invasive, we could consider um, they don't some sort that. of habitat improvement in that area by but getting that out of there. Keep in mind, if, if, if you were to clear a three foot area, you would barely be have put your saw or your axe away before that Japanese knotwood would be growing in that tree foot space. Right. Because mm -hmm. if you clear area, it just comes in. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I don't know what the roots are like in Japanese knotweed, but it's the the other woody material that's out there that they were told to be worried about. I think that's why they're 
identifying this, mm -hmm. you know, those saplings as a problem, and they like the knotweed. So I don't know if the roots are the softer. Nuts, I mean, yeah, the not, I don't know that the knotweed's doing damage to the wall. Mm -hmm. I don't think it. I thought we had roots. Yeah. I think they're I think they're shallow. Yeah. They're pretty shallow, flat. I, I That's why we need a botanist on the committee. I was just wondering <laughs> if you could just take a shovel and just jam it in the ground and kill all the roots before it hits the stone wall. There are ferns back there and other like small I don't know what the other one's called, but there are a lot of ferns and stink something. Skunk cabbage. Skunk cabbage. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. yeah I, I agree and with Terry. We need the resource line before we can uh, before we can uh, talk intelligence. Because like this hunk cabbage right there, and that's wetlands right there. It is wetlands and skunk yes. cabbage. Is that so, within like five or ten feet? Uh, skunk cabbage. That'd be you know like t there's there's not any of the skunk cabbage right next to the wall. It's mm -hmm. you know set back. Our, uh, before you arrived, our initial s sense was to continue this particular um, permit mm -hmm. so that we could go out for another site visit when it's daylight mm -hmm. um, and see and get down no mosquitoes. <laughs> yeah, mosquitoes, no mosquitoes and get down to the bottom of that wall and get a better sense where the wetlands line is mm -hmm. there. Mm -hmm. um, Do you have any idea when that might be? That, well, that would be um, the eighth. Yeah, it would be the eighth. That be tree September that's 8th. leaning over just looks honestly. The birch. It's, yeah, the one that's it's yeah. it's it's leaning right over the patio, right. Right. and it has it has seriously changed position over the summer. I can't tell you that. I mean, I can't tell you that. I don't know when that's gonna fall. No, wait. Is this the totally stripped dead one? Totally no. stripped dead yes. one. Yes. Yeah. Not yeah. the birch. Not the birch with the scar. The I one for the f the furthest one in. The furthest yeah, one in. Yes. Well, you could look up and sort of see like there's no leaves on that tree that's leaning over, and there's leaves. You know, all the other trees around it are alive. I, but from my one. standpoint, I, I'd be comfortable approving a negative determination for taking in the two trees and trimming the limbs off the other two trees right. tonight, and then we could uh, deal with that uh, wetland line and the vegetation close to the wall at a later date. Because the other thing's maintenance, right? The saplings, that's, you know, if you had to put a word on it, that would be maintenance. But, and also just because of cost, I mean, if we had somebody come out to the house and, and only take that one dead tree down, yeah. that's going to cost yeah. us a certain amount right. to have them come down and then right. take the rest well, of it. Well, you're talking about the two trees in the back, cutting them down and trimming, trimming. the trimming. Them aside. Right. Trimming. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I, if, I, 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 if, if you'd be amenable to having us vote on just those four items. That the dead one, one yeah. that continues to lean, yeah. the birch with the scar, yeah. and two the trimming maples. of the two maples that are the, the, for the branches that are encroaching upon your house, yeah. on the side of your house. Yeah. And we could just deal with that tonight. Yeah. The consequence of that would be at a later date, if you wanted to talk about cutting of those smaller saplings, you would have to reapply okay. for another request for determination. Okay. I would also um, advise you that any repair or maintenance on that wall is in or close to the wetlands and would require a, a filing also. I did not know that. Well, right. We, we, uh, any future work well, on that wall, you, we need to come and, and, okay. and talk to us. Okay. If that wet line is Once as close as we really we suspect, if, it, yeah. if it's as close as we thought. Yes, are are assuming it is. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Um, okay. No, that's that's fine. I mean, because those are really the most. I mean, that's that's the okay. stuff that's causing harm. Yeah, and that way you can get is, that birch can snap off and officially yeah. under. Yeah. So <coughs> I move we issue a negative determination for trimming, cutting down the birch, the dead tree, and trimming the two what we think are maples that are hanging over the wall and. Okay, there's a motion. Is there a second? Oh, I'm sorry. We had a. Uh, well, is it, was any. Well, let's take the motion and second it, okay. and then I'll see if there's okay. I'll sorry. Second. a second. Any other questions or comments from the public or the commission? Okay, hearing none. No, I had, I, I had oh. a question. I'm not with the commission, but. Um, you are. Where is the line where we're trimming those trees? Straight up from the retaining wall? 
or the 50 percent of the canopy? What, what are you guys uh, calling that at? I would say trimming any limbs that are overhanging the retaining wall. I'm, I'm comfortable. The distance with that. from that from the house of the retaining wall is going to be like five feet, um, five ten feet, no more. Six feet I think those trees are almost the top. Of those trees are over top of the retaining wall, or maybe even close to that. Squirrels can jump on them. Yeah, so I think. But those trees but they're are flying squirrels. They're six feet away from the wall. The, uh, the boughs are hanging out over close. Yeah, I mean, that, actually, I say over the retaining log. If the arbor thinks it's safest to trim those limbs right at the trunk, which I think they usually do, I'm um, good with that. Okay. Is there any. Um, appetite to somehow leave this open and just allow this so then when we get back out there and look uh, the applicant doesn't incur a more cost to, to just continue this uh, can you modify an RDA well I just allow just we'll just allow her to go forward with what we just agreed to I can send her a letter mm -hmm. um, and then it seems like we'll have this wrapped up by the next meeting sure and then we can discuss under the same file. Yeah. I'm, I'm good with that. I don't know if it's... No, I, I so mean... That means this filing I mean, I think, I think we should also be talking about when we need to change the site visit if we're running out of light and, mm -hmm. you know... This was 8.30. This was the last stop we did. Yeah, it was the last stop. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we can get... We'll, we'll discuss that. Okay. We'll discuss that later. Um, so Chuck, what are you what are you proposing exactly that we continue this yeah, RDA? Continue it and issue a letter allowing what Jamie just proposed, just saying to um, we the commission agrees to this and um, giving you know parameters of where what the work would be, and um, if you could uh, meet us on the eighth for another mm -hmm. site visit and yeah. the tenth for the next meeting, we okay. should have this wrapped up. Oh, great. So we can go forward with So you can go yeah, forward with yeah. that part, and right. we can maybe, if you want a final decision. Later. That, would be, that would be great, because okay. yeah. then it would all be... If, if, of course, if you decide not to go ahead with the clearing, then we're all done. But if you do, and we have another site visit, that wetland line should be marked when we make our site visit. Well, so then we that, that's something that should be done, you know, it's eventually. It's, you know. Do we need to mark the trees that we need to mark? Jamie, what I, I, it sounded pretty clear to me. Do you know me. which ones we're talking about, Chuck? We walked back and forth. There's a whole bunch of trees, and they were very selective with which ones they wanted to take out. So I think that's why it becomes confusing, because they weren't right. ready to take them all down. They, right. they liked some, and um, so... Take five minutes. Yeah. Uh, Anika, could, could maybe you meet Chuck on site for 10 minutes? Because I think you know exactly which ones we're, which well, four we're talking about. I, I'm. That's why I was so specific about the birch with right. the scar and, yeah. the, and that dead one that you said keeps keeps yeah. leaning. Yeah. There's no question dead. when you look at that area. Think, there's no question which trees we're talking about. And and okay. I think between those, you know, I think those two maples were just past yeah, inside the little tiny. Um, yeah, well, uh, I thought they were like a few feet. Seven. They might have been six feet, but yeah. they weren't so, more than six feet. So I think it's pretty there's, evident. There's no other trees like that anymore. No. Two ones and the rest are all and those two maples that you were, we were going to trim the high branches on, those were just to the right of the house. Yeah. So, I, I think it's pretty evident. I, if, if you need to, I can definitely come out and meet if needed. But okay. I'm, I'm not sure. So, um, how about we entertain a motion to continue? And it's one more question. Jamie, you said uh, the line needs to be established. Do you want me to flag a line or do you want me to, do you want... What are you talking about? You, uh, getting a professional wetland scientist? If they want to go ahead with it, I think we need a professional wetland scientist. To flag that line. That's my thought, but be interested to know what the other uh, commissioners think. I mean, your time's valuable, Chuck. Uh, yeah. you, you need to be writing orders and conditions and not a flag but every every case i think we need to yeah i mean obviously you and me had two different opinions on what it meant to can not close the hearing yeah. um, but at the same time i mean uh, what i don't know the date of that cul-de-sac but i'm sure some of those oh, weapons here, were kind of here's the when was your house built do you know 21 should have been something 
I don't know. So, so maybe we could go back and see if there's any old files perfect. that have a That'd wetland line there. Because that way all we need to do is verify. Instead of when locating. that house was built, it should have had a wetlands permit. And at that time, the wetlands would have been flagged. I mean, that wall could have been compensation for... That wall could have been built just to permit that house to be put in. The center was too well built and freestanding to be done easily. I couldn't. And it was a nice old wall, very well built. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't think it's a reason. No, I don't think it's a reason. Will, did you have a comment? 91, you said that? I think so, 91. Yeah. Um, just so I understand, in terms of trimming those the two trees that are uh, growing over to the house, were you saying? from the wall up, or are we being more specific If, if the arbor is things, it would be more healthy for the tree uh -huh. to trim them right at the trunk. At the trunk. That's oh. fine. Okay. All right. Whatever. The ones that hang over. The ones that hang yeah. over. Not, not the other ones. Not the ones that If it's hanging over, you can cut it at the trunk. Yeah. Okay. So, you know, the arborists know the healthiest way to trim, so yeah. that'll ensure the vitality of those trees, which is best for everybody. So at this point, is there a motion to continue? So moved. Okay, second? No second. All right, all those in favor? Okay. Good luck. Thank, Thank you. Coming. Thank you. Thanks for giving me a call. Thank Thanks for coming in. And if you would, if you haven't already, just sign in in the back. Oh, please. Okay. Thank you. So the first movement is here. We already, we already moved the issue of the area for determination. Do you guys have a vote? Well, we'll yeah. delete that okay. because we have an issue. <laughs> okay. We're giving tacit approval, I think, to go ahead with certain actions and not voting on the final request. Is that clear, Kim? Clear as mud? I did. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, what what we're right. really doing is. Uh, Approving emergency permission to take those other two yeah, trees down and exactly. keep the RD, uh, RDA open. Exactly. I told you they're coming from Worcester. Yeah, you're really right. They're coming I from hope there. everybody's got their oh, windows oh, rolled yeah. up. Yeah. yeah. They were calling big thunderstorms coming in from Worcester. That is not. That is not a small rumble. Okay. Um, Let's move on to the determination of applicability for uh, 112 Colonial Drive. What? Is that on the agenda? Old new business. Oh, old, old new business. business. Okay. It's 8.16, we're done with our hearings. Okay, so this is, um, pool? This is a, a pool with a retaining wall and maybe a and maybe oh, this a, is at above maybe grand a pool, above grand pool, right? Yes. Where he had it all staked. Yeah. Maybe right. a driveway expansion and a <laughs> with a deck and a. Is this the one where he had those sticks that. lying in yeah. the yes, yard? Yes, yes. This was it. Yeah. That was. That well, didn't he agree not to build the wall? Is what the minutes say. I think he was including a shorter one. Okay. What if we check? Has a. He's not building the wall. That's what the minutes say. He wasn't building a high wall. I, don't, I thought he was he just not sure if he needed sure. to build the wall. I thought, well, I, I can't remember, but I think we can check the minutes, but I think the minutes say he agreed not to build a wall on the dam gradient side of the pool. But it also says if he, if he needs to get a, an engineered approved wall, i.e. a drawing for it, that, that you can that submit, be, that submit that drawing submit that. Right. Which we don't right, because I forward. asked him about the design of that wall. If they are needed by the building inspector. Um, yeah, so we asked for copies of design plans. Yeah. Yeah. Where are the minutes off? Right here. Well, I, I he's he's going to do oh, a okay. separate filing for yeah. the wall. Oh, it's right there. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Call it a separate filing. Yep. Yeah. So we've already uh, voted to issue the negative determination, and we agree. We voted, so let's uh, sign it. But he's not doing the retaining wall. So I well, want to well, we strike that. that. Yeah. Because it's listed as something that we're approving. 
Well, I thought that if you had a certain height, we need to look at it, but if it was going to be a low wall, we didn't really need to. Okay. But we're not approving the wall because we don't have any designs. So. Right. Now, hold on. There were two, also two wall concepts he was right. talking about. Right. One was between the pool and the house. Right. And one he was kind of toying with when he was talking to me during the site visits was instead of building a raised decking around his above ground pool, putting a wall above his above ground pool and backfilling that. Right. And, um, and, um, I thought he agreed. And we not. agreed that a separate filing would be needed mm. for a wall around the pool. Right. Yeah, that's so the thing. wall between, I think this RDA covers the wall between the pool and, and the house. Right. Right. Yeah. So there. But Are we not there? the wall and the. Yeah, that was just something he talked. That was a conceptual thing that happened during the meeting, right? Yes. He was yes. No, no. He well, talked no, about he, it on the site visit. Too. He was talking oh, yeah. about it kind of the whole time. Uh, I didn't. And it wasn't. It yeah, wasn't. Yeah, he wants uh, the pool surround the pool with a wall he'll need a new filing that'll be a new filing okay, okay. i think so let's, we have it then. so let's let's move on so, this it's so voted. the determination now does not allow a retaining wall between the pool and the resource area right mm -hmm. yeah. correct good yep. it just it's <laughs> yep i mean it doesn't specifically mention that he can't put one there yeah there's not one on the plan no, there isn't. We don't want to mention it was just it doesn't one of say those. he can't put a basketball hoop in the backyard either, right. but I mean, do you see what I'm saying? I mean, it's not, I didn't write it that way. Right. To, I mean, yeah. he didn't say he wanted to do it and it's not on the plan. It does yeah. say retaining wall as per plan. Yeah. So we don't, give, we don't give him permission for anything he didn't ask for. That's right. Yeah. All right. Done. I'm going to start it further down. All right, that one's so prepared. So, what do we need? We, need to we sign just need it, to right. sign it. But that, that's just for the wall between the pool and the house. And if we don't right. mention the other one, then we didn't give permission for it. As far as I know, I know nothing about that other one. There's only one wall. I know it's between the pool and the house, and that's it. Well, the minutes say you know something about a wall. <laughs> <laughs> but the commission agreed that a separate filing would be needed. So I can see that the wisdom of the commission. That everything he asked for in writing on the application. That's what I wrote. He's allowed to do all of that with the plan he submitted, which is what I got from okay. you guys. And our standard conditions. All right, sounds good. So uh, the certificate of compliance for 197 South Street. We, uh, we performed a site visit. Uh, the lawn behind there is lovely. They didn't do a whole lot of the work that they said they were going to do. Um, and as a matter of fact, if, as you could probably tell from the field notes, um, he is in agreement, he's in the process of making a deed restriction on his property to prohibit development of whole the whole back forested portion of his lot that also abuts a neighbor who desires that forested portion to remain. Um, so, he, he sold part of his lot. So, they put a deed restriction on something. That's pretty great. So yeah, that was nice. Hmm. Does somebody get something? Does this, that's new information, though. So, but, yeah. but did he do what was on the order of conditions? Because I sent that out with you guys. And a anything he did was in compliance with the order of conditions. Yeah. And, he's, and as far as the work that you conditioned, he did it. In compliance. In, he's in compliance, yeah. and there's no in issues, no outstanding compliance. issues. No. Nope. But there may be some new uh, VR or something like that coming in the future. Hmm. That's nice. Well, I don't know if it's going to come in as a conservation restriction. A, a deed restriction agreement. A development. It's not conservation. Ah, or subdivision right. or development. Yeah. So he's putting that through land court. And he's talking about selling his property soon. So we had um, to move closer to the prep school. Right. All right. So I have that ready to prepare and sign, and um, I just have to hold on to it. I sent an email to Jack tonight, and there I couldn't 
find the book and page number. I didn't get any information. We don't have it in our laser fiche. And when I um, went online to the Registry of Deeds, the website was down. So oh, okay. you guys can sign this, but I need more information before, before I send finalized. it out. Okay. So. I'm sorry I was talking. Is this Sad Street you're talking about? Yeah. Just, I just didn't get a book and page number, which I'd like to have. Yeah. So I issued, I let Jack know that. So I should have it tomorrow or the next day. Okay. And it's coming around. Great. While that's coming around, um, why don't we uh, talk about the order of conditions for 7 Indiana Avenue? So at the last meeting, we closed that public hearing and we voted to issue an order of conditions. Oh, this is um, copies if anyone would like to look at them. This is pretty standard. I mean, I think we all agree that it was at least 75 feet away. It had everything at the start that we could ask for. So it was standard conditions. The only thing I thought needed to be changed was I personally do not like straw wattles. I don't think they hold up. And I wanted to have hay bale and silt fence or mulch sock for the erosion control. They don't, don't like the what? The, what? the straw, wattles. straw wattles. You mean those tubes? Yeah, it's like a tube. It's like yeah. a nylon with, with hay blasted what? into it. So what? it's really light. Why don't you like it? It's really light. It has, it's, it has to be installed with stakes on either side. They usually don't do that. They just drag it out onto the, onto the lawn. Um, sometimes it comes flat which doesn't provide much um, control. And you can see from the plans, I don't know if you have the plans in front of you, that they cordon off a whole area that's going to be their staging area, and it's, it's about 15 to 20 feet she in back of where they're working. So usually when I see someone working in back, I like a nice barrier, like construction fence. Or the downside of those hay bales, they come with a lot of seeds from the basic plants. Yeah. I mean, no one's really, I can, you know, straw bales, silt fence. It's, you silt know, fence, I like. All that works. Yeah, it doesn't have to be hay also. Um, but the mulch works. Right. It has to be done properly, yeah. Well, maybe we need two copies signed. Well, the mulch sock would be the closest to what they wanted to do, which is to have that tube and just drop it in place. For seven Indiana? Just practice if you're doing that. Don't sign the seven Indiana? Just You can just do it for practice. You don't want that sign? Those are... They're just copies for you. Oh, okay. That's what you're talking about. So, I'm just trying to roll with it. If you I want was, to practice well, signing, I was just trying to. <laughs> but I thought we were. I thought we were circulating. Uh, so we're done circulating South Street. Did you get South Street? Is that South Street? No, yeah. If you want, I'm looking for the. That's not sign the one to sign. I'll keep that nice and clean. You guys can. Okay. You know, shuffle through those papers, and then when you're ready to uh, sign, I have a clean, crisp copy right here. Of South oh, Street, I see. or yeah, no, no, of. Uh, Indiana. 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 Did we already sign Side Street? I think we did. Yeah, yeah we did. Oh, okay. Yeah. Sorry. Um, so where, what is an ideal sort of scenario to put up the waddles? Like a flat I, I don't area? You mean. haven't seen them work effectively. I haven't seen these things in practice, you know, so. I mean, the hay bales work. They work very well. Yeah, yeah, if they're installed correctly, and particularly if they work in conjunction with the silt fence, you'll frequently start to see plants grow in those hay bales, and that makes a really That's nice. solid, yeah, yeah. stabilizing. <laughs> yeah, it's true. Yeah, heaven for garter snakes. <laughs> right. Mm. Yeah. But they can come with some seeds, Phragmites seeds. Yep. Yep. Um, okay. Straw bale. You could 
change that up. I'm. It just has to be a roasted grill. I'm just telling you, I don't. The other stuff isn't substantial enough. I, I don't like. There's a, it's a specific kind called Teratu, which is horrible. It doesn't uh, doesn't work very well. And I, I think these are like off the shelf stuff. The the kind that a company comes out and you know fills up the sock or whatnot. Those work fine. Those those are good. But these off the shelf things are very light. When it's, it's a, and because oh. they're so light, you have to, you Steak. know, stagger the steaks, and then, you know, actually, if you look at the videos, you're supposed to put twine in between them. No one's doing that. No. I don't think I'd no. ask anyone to do that, but I'd prefer to start out with something that doesn't need too much explanation. Do, do you, does anybody know off the top of their head um, difference in cost in saute bales? They're pretty expensive, aren't they? I assume they are. <coughs> I don't know the difference, but yeah, salt marche is probably $12, $15 bale. Okay. So I don't know. a great alternative is, like you said, just the silk fence works fine. And if you're, if you're worried about construction vehicles backing up into that, you just back it up with some construction fencing, which is orange. And yep. those two things seem to work out real well. And, yeah. you know, we have... Silk fence is twenty-five dollars, plus or minus. Last time I checked, for a hundred feet, so it's not very expensive. Not too bad. But that's not installed, of course. And uh, actually, I find out that a lot of, you know, it's something like the construction company or the homeowner is going to install that stuff because it's not very difficult. Right? There's a, you know, there's a secret way to install it where you don't have to trench. You could just. So what, what are we going to do? Well, where she specifically asked for a certain kind of erosion control, we just say erosion control, and then I'm allowed on site to make any kind of adjustment I want. So I've just written into the order that I just wrote silt fence and hay bale, but I can change that to just silt fence. So um, most of the people that come through the office are in constant contact with me. I, called her tonight and asked her a couple of other things because again, uh, funny enough, the Jack Sullivan uh, permit uh, did not have the book and page number. Mm -hmm. So uh, she's gonna get that for me tomorrow. I mean, for this for this particular project, her erosion control is gonna be set up in her backyard right. between the project area and her down gradient fence. Mm -hmm. I, I don't have a problem with just, just a silt fence. For this particular yeah. project but yeah so but this is something we ought to think about and talk about in, in, uh, yeah. over the long term but yeah the yeah if I remember this project correctly I thought we didn't even need a order of conditions but because there's so much yard between the right. action right so I'm right. really comfortable with just so yeah. that not a lot of in this either. case no no there. it's not a there's steep there's a slope drop off and it was close yeah yeah, yeah. So, so you know and just in my the way I think about it, silt fence has three reasons why we install it. Uh, first, erosion control, which you know in here urban setting you don't really need that so much. So why else would we do it? We would do it just to make sure that everyone in town understands that the conservation commission is paying attention and right. someone's doing the right thing for you know the wetland um, because RDAs don't have a sign out in front of the house. And the third thing, the reason why we would do it is it actually is a limit of work. Yeah. Right. So. Yeah. For those three reasons, it you know people always say, why do you why I mean it's flat lawn, it's grass, why are we doing it? Well, pick yeah. the other two. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I have seen more than one case where there's four to six inches of silt on the upgrading side of silt fence where it's been very effective. And it's mm. good that it was there. And it's very good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I agree. A couple developments we've had in town. Yeah, so okay. we could even think about not needing it also which I mean there is the damage that you talked about and the invasives coming in the expense with a certain amount of flat lawn between the wetland you could say well so nothing's really needed you could just you could just use construction fencing or something like that and just establish a, not an erosion control line but a limit of work line well, I don't know. Now they're building a foundation, aren't they? They're I mean, using they're concrete. Basically. They're using concrete. Um, but are, are they going to be doing? 
I mean, are they going to be doing any dewatering while they're building the foundation? Or are they going? I, I thought they were building out a foundation. Is it? I can't remember this particular project. Yeah, it's three projects. Yeah, the house there's, that like you a, were in. there's like an addition on the side, but there's nothing underneath it. So they're just taking the whole side off and putting up a whole new thing with the foundation. Right. And like a deck in the back with a little patio at the bottom. The front and the back. Yeah. Yeah, it's a full, right. it's a full foundation in the back there. Yeah, it's a full foundation. Yeah. Um, and there's water that she says comes down that side, anyways. Yeah. Well, I, I'll just reiterate, you know, that I'm fine with a fil with a filter fence as a standalone. But yeah, I, I don't think just construction fencing is. I think something should be there just in case. Yeah, the biggest source of might be when the cement truck washes out their shoes. Yeah. Leave a big mess in the backyard. Yeah. <clears throat> I think Jeff's right to to delineate the limited work. I think so too. Okay, so ready to sign the, any other questions or comments about this? Ready to sign it? We, we voted on this. It. Yeah, I got this one. Yes. <laughs> I thought this was the draft. That's the practice one. These are the practice I'm ones. I'm waiting for the practice. real one. can't use the practice one. It's the real one. Eh? Is the real one say something different? <laughs> no, it doesn't, but it's just not double sided. Why? Do you want me to recycle it? Yeah. We signed it because I thought it was. I was ready to get through these. I was like, <coughs> okay. Good. I was gonna look. Okay, next item of business, uh, the tree service and arborist policy discussion. So, you know, I printed them out, but I, think I gave you one and then I printed more and if I can run down and get yeah. them. Yeah, go for I it. I forgot to grab them. Sure. Okay. No, this is a general discussion about um, tree service. Sorry, Alice. Were we trying to decide what our policy was yeah. going to be? Yeah. Because we just well, kept we going in circles and then decided to. We passed the motion last two weeks ago. To develop policy. a policy. No, we said that we would, uh, we? We would um, issue something to the, the <laughs> owner and the, and the tree cutter. Yeah. So they were two different people. We would it'd be either, either going to be one or the other. We said it's going to be both. Yeah, we. Mr. Sullivan made a motion to authorize an enforcement order to both owner of the property and contractor. Right, that was a Which page was that on? It's at the bottom of the third page. Right above Gavin's circle. Yep, without a policy. There it is. It's in italics right there. Mm -hmm. Okay. So we don't well, um, and I think we had some discussion that you said let's take a look at something in writing and have it ready for the next meeting so okay. that we can review something in writing. And Chuck has drafted something. I haven't read it yet. But he's going to get additional copies for it, of it, for people to look at. Is there something we can do in the interim? <laughs> yep. <laughs> they seem pretty handy. Yeah. I think we have covered them. I've got a copy. You gave me it. Thanks. Can I just have one to follow? Thanks. Please. Um, thank you. Mm -hmm. 
Okay. Third line, Jude. Um, the road right of way in Reading should first contact the conservation or must first contact? Because it previously states that they're within 100 feet of a boarding vegetation. Must is more definite. Yeah, it, yeah the, legally it should be shall or must. Let's put should, must. Should is not a. We'll put okay. must. That goes along with would it, could it, should it? I don't mind. In contracts, you use shall. I don't. Yeah, oh, shall. I would vote for shall. Yeah, I think I would go with shall. Okay. The big problem in all of this is who knows if they're 100 feet of a. Right. A lot of people don't even know they have one. Yeah. Reason why you said specialist instead of scientist? Or what said? Um, no, there was none. I just giving them options, uh, you know, because well, the scientist in Massachusetts, you don't really need one to donate the weapons. Yeah. And so maybe, like at our last meeting, we allowed Jack to delineate him, Jack Sullivan, who's an engineer, to delineate a weapon. Right. So, site, site professional, <laughs> I was thinking of saying something like that. Qualified but, you know, professional. That, yeah, that, you get curious, clean that yeah, up. Yeah. No, I don't. I didn't want to pick. I didn't want to pick one person because it. it run on other scientists. people can do it. Yeah. Like this should be. It would be nice if it was a wetland scientist, yeah. but. It, yeah. Well, what what do you want to what do you want to decide about um, that last sentence, that last portion of the sentence in item one? that this may require hiring a wetland specialist to survey the site. Well, one, it should start off as a sentence. It should have a period after law and start a new sentence. Period after act? After act, yeah. Yep. It's a run on otherwise. Oh. Um, yeah, um. And change the spelling on the site. Mm -hmm. Yep, S-I-T. Um, wetland specialist, so. A knowledgeable professional, or I mean, how would we? I mean, I'm fine with the way it is. I was just curious if there was like a specific reason why it was like that. Well, if we're gonna say may require, we might as well put in wetland scientist. But the, oh. I kind of agree with this point that if they see the wetland scientist, they're gonna think they need to pay like for that. If they already have a land surveyor, like we let what was his name? Hey, Jack, Jack Sullivan. Do it. Who's a, then. Right. Right. He would. He's not a wetland scientist, but he did it, so he has enough knowledge to know. That's why I'm so I trouble. now agree with him that scientists is okay. Might be too limiting. Okay. It, it probably should also be wetland protection bylaw and or wetland protection act, or maybe just and, but not or. Right, and and and. Yeah. Right, because um, it could be. Either or or both. Mm -hmm. Want to cover our bases? Yeah. Yeah. So could it be one or the other or both? It could. It could just be the bylaw. It definitely could just be the bylaw. Could it <coughs> just, just? I cannot think of an instant where it could be just the wetland, the state wetland act, but not the bylaw. There are infinite possibilities. So. So we put an and or and cover our base. Any other comments or questions about item one? And so the last <coughs> sentence, is that still wetland specialist or is it scientist? Is that the specialist, I think. And, <coughs> and Just make an expert. And is the, <coughs> the word survey the, the best word for what a wetland specialist does on a site? Or is it evaluate or is it review? Delineate? Or delineate. Delineate is what they do. Yeah. It's a wetland delineate. And probably be right because you don't need them to survey the land. They may think it's right. <coughs> be asking for a surveyor. Yeah. 
and it should be not sight as in seeing, but mm. sight as in location. Yep, yeah, yeah. S-I-T. We just yeah. say delineate, right? Yeah. 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 Instead of survey. Yeah. Um, to delineate wetlands on the site is what it really should say. Yeah. Well, let me um, let me open this up a little bit, and and what if it's within a hundred, well, a hundred or two hundred feet of a river, and a similar thing is happening. Oh, that's right. We say uh, of a boring vegetated wetlands, it also could be a bank. Could be right? a bank. Could be a of a resource area. Um, we need a broader description. Maybe. Yeah, it should be a resource area. But you're right, then there's 200 feet for roof front. Hmm. Within 100 feet of a Wait resource a area. No, in the inner river front, you can cut trees, can't you? <laughs> you can, you can do a lot. It's just the inner riparian that you can't do much in. Yeah. So um, that 100 foot feet is still I the right it number. It has to be an improvement. Hmm. I'd say 100 feet of a resource area rather than just a BBD. Yeah, a resource area, because that would cover both. Yeah. Yeah. So it's a resource area of bank, land underwater. Yeah. What if we get super vague and we say within 100 feet of a wet area? No. <laughs> that doesn't mean it. Because that covers. <laughs> wet, well. wet driveway. I mean, yeah, that could be a swimming pool. It could be a it could swimming pool. Baby's got a wet Natural diet. wet area. <laughs> and canal. So you're allowing cutting of trees outside the first 100 feet of a riverfront? Not many I, houses I can't come recall the riverfront yeah. regs off the top of my head, but I thought in the outer riverfront, but it's, you could cut trees. But, it's but, still, but it's still no, this is telling them to get a permit. To what? Get review. Right, right. We're just telling them to get review. Well, I mean, still you still need review. I, I can't remember. I thought you didn't, but I can't. Oh, yeah, you have to review it. But, cause even the so the riverfront. All 200 feet is resource yeah. area. So just yeah. thinking about it that way, of course you would need review. No, the whole 200 feet is resource area. Only the river is the resource area. The 200 feet is the buffer zone. There's no buffer in riverfront. It's a resource. I don't think so. I, I, I'm having trouble remembering. But it, well, that's how it is. Yeah. Because it's Cause there's wetland buffer riverfront. Riverfront. Yeah. That's a resource. Two hundred foot. That's riverfront. That's if you're working within the two hundred foot riverfront. So would we say then hundred feet of a resource area or two hundred feet of a Well you don't need to even give a <coughs> number of feet. You could say both. You could say within a hundred foot of a river of bordering vegetated wetland or within two hundred foot of yeah. you know, the riverfront. We could um we could really simplify this back by using some of the language uh, Mr. Sullivan gave at the last meeting with a slight amendment. And uh, if you don't mind, I'm just going to, I haven't really entirely worked it all through, but why don't I just propose something to the effect of um, the Town of Reading Conservation Commission will issue an enforcement order to both the owner of a property and contractor if work is, mm -hmm. if work is being done that is subject to Either the deep. state and the town wetlands regulations without authorization. We already voted on that. Well, what I'm saying is this policy Our language policy, yeah. can be um, simplified to include all these conditions and all these scenarios. Mm -hmm. one, one statement that covers everything. Yeah. So, uh, not to not to diminish your effort in putting this <laughs> together, you know, as a as a policy, because I think it's a good. So we should just attempt. add two hundred feet of a river to, to what is already on here. You're just saying we've been out of the area. No, we just say work in a, in the resource area. Work subject to <laughs> approval. Work subject to, uh, you know, jurisdiction. Yeah, work under the conservation's jurisdiction, according to the state and town. Well, we're not going to say the distance on this. Yeah, because we don't want. Because the distances vary depending right. on the type of resource well, area, and, and so. Um, 
we kind of get stuck. It's better to be gentle than to try and list everything. Right. Yeah. Also, our bylaws allow trimming of trees in manicured lawns. Manicured lawns, and if if we're just referring and if back thir to you know if they're 52 feet from the resource area, they then that's not a violation. Should we? Do you want me to try and repeat that or? Work subject to. So okay. anything beyond so that, you're gonna have to repeat. <laughs> so the, the conservation co conservation commission will issue an enforcement order. So this is Brian's language to both the owner of the property and contractor. Are you reading this? Yeah, off the minutes. What am I, what am I writing it for? I don't know. So you want the copy of the minutes? The bottom of yeah, page three, right? yeah, there's nice bold italics and. So glad you got this on that last meeting, Kim. So the, the Town of Reading Conservation Commission will off will <laughs> issue an enforcement order to both the owner of the property and contractor if, if a violation occurs. If work is being done without authorization under the state and town wetlands regulations. That's not part of this. How does that sound? Isn't that what it already said? Say it again? Or we're yeah, we're just writing it down to codify the final language on our website. And as a written policy. The town, the, the Reading Conservation Commission will issue. Can you write issue. it down? Sure. I mean, it just makes more sense if you're, <laughs> you know. It's gonna get lost in translation. Yeah. The town, I'm gonna read it out loud as I'm writing. Town of Reading. It's getting cold. It's freezing. Oh good, I'm gonna turn this down. <laughs> Conservation Could Commission. Could you please call it <laughs> Issue. The last. Get on. Shall, not will, shall issue. It's still blowing around quite a bit outside. Um, an enforcement order. It's right out there. Yeah. Both. It's blowing around. Oh, yeah. Uh, is it raining? It might be raining the second, but there's water standing in the parking lot. Hmm. Glad I drove today. Okay. The Town of Reading Conservation Commission shall issue an enforcement order to both the owner and property owner of the property and contractor if work is being done without author authorization as required by the state and town wetlands regulations. Now that doesn't say anything about cutting trees. That could be anything. Right. Um, and then we'll keep number two. <laughs> Violations of this policy may be punished by fines up to $100 per violation under Mass General Laws, which is administered by that's usually Well, the is, is by that... Department. Hundred dollars per day per violation. per violation. So it could be per tree. I mean, it comes with discretion. I mean, yeah. we're not. Again, we're not trying to. Well, there's also there also are money. fines under the bylaws. Right. Aren't they three hundred? Yeah, it's best. I can't remember, but that sounds right. It's so so much for a first violation, that second violation. So, I I. I I'm not sure we want to put in our policy what's already in the rules, what's already in the in the bylaws. Um, so I would leave out this fines because they're already stated in the Wetlands Protection Act and in the bylaws. And I'm afraid if we don't have it exactly in line with the, we'll challenge it. it. It'll be challenged and it'll be it'll be a mess. When we had those fines approved, I had to go through town council and everything else. And actually, they even had to be voted on at a uh, town meeting. 
Hmm. Okay. So I, I would I would be silent on the fines because they're covered elsewhere unless you want to say as part of our policy violations may be punished in uh, under the provisions in the Weather Protection Act and the bylaws. That's I think that that's I, fine. I think that's so fine. just just take out by fines <laughs> fine. of hundred. What? Just take out by fines of a hundred up to Yeah, it may be fines. punished by fines authorized under the ten bylaws and wetland protection act. Yeah, and honestly the fine schedule in our regs is um, you know, failure to file a notice of intent or RDA and to receive a valid order of conditions or determination of applicability is three hundred dollars. According yeah. to our fine schedule. So violations policy may be punished under Massachusetts general yes. laws. Just leave it at that. And under our town and our town and regulations. And Reading and bylaws. Okay. What do you have, Chuck? Because I have the regs. Is, this what, is that what you're looking at? Yeah, I'm looking at it right now. Yeah. I'm looking at the yeah. Yeah. So these. What's the first? One? The first three are. A is for three hundred. Three hundred, three hundred and twenty-five dollars. Which one qualifies for this? Um. Well, um, A. Failure to file. How about failure D? to file? How about D. What's D say? Which is twenty-five dollars. What's D? Failure to notify the commission prior to activity where a order of conditions or a request for determination or a minor project for it um, requires such notice. $25. Yep. That seems to be the one. Oh, no, but that looks like... But it, that sounds to me like they have an order of conditions or a request for determination. Well, failure to notify, notify the commission prior to activity where a order of a conditions of an order or a condition of an order of condition. Or a, or a condition of an order of conditions. So one of the stipulations in an yeah. order of conditions. But that sort of presupposes that there is an established order right. of conditions. Right. And they yeah. haven't. So here, Chuck, you have in the regs <laughs> the the authority to to fine some of these contractors who are not notifying you. You could let them know. Mm. Uh, actually, Chuck can't yeah, think the commission has to issue a fine. What's that? You could let you could inform them of the fine schedule. Oh, sure, right? absolutely. You can let them know. Oh, oh, uh, Laura, um, Jim told me I could issue a fine. Yeah, I believe that's correct. Or the police, a, you know, agent of the town. But I, I don't, I don't need I, that responsibility. I, I wouldn't. <laughs> well, I would not there. advise you to issue a fine until you brought it before the commission. I think that could could cause a lot of trouble. Or spend the money, huh? No, no, no. It would just, it would put you in a onerous. Yeah, I mean, you don't need that. The selectman coming down on your head. No, so, what you mean? So. If, if I have the ticket, I have the book of tickets, right? Mm -hmm. I didn't look at the other one. I actually turned it in, so I can't look at it anymore. Did the commission write the tickets out? And that is that what you're talking about? No, I can write a ticket. You people will collect the fine, or you will enforce it, or we in in my tenure here, we have probably only issued less than half a dozen fines, maybe even less than three. Yeah. And it has always been warnings in advance, much discussion, and a full vote of the commission before we issue the fine. That's not to say that that's the only way we can do it, but that's been historically what we've done. Um, but with this policy, wouldn't we be changing it? Wouldn't no. Now we're saying that we would need to. I, I, I don't think it should change what we've done. but. Oh, maybe. Okay. But this, but this policy um, attaches the violation um, to both the property owner and the contractor. Mm -hmm. That's what's. That's what's so sort of. 
It says right happens. there in number seven, uh, citations issued by the enforcing person um, shall be presented to the Conservation Commission for its review. Now we need to what, what, that you, what are you person. reading from, Chuck? We're having uh, trouble finding Number seven is just above the fine schedule. Oh, enforcement. Who's the, who's the enforcing person? The enforcing person will take comments, blah, blah, blah. Okay, you, well, right, you could issue a citation and then it's up to the commission to review it and determine what action to take. That's how we've operated. I, I don't think it's... Right. Upon review, the commission may, at its discretion, withdraw the citation. Yeah, in, in my understanding how, how the practice has happened before, um, and I'm glad we're revisiting this, is um, we really are kind of, um, we really hesitate to issue fines because we would rather get cooperative agreement up front and not have to threaten use of fines to, to get compliance with the, with the regs and the requirements. Um, and I don't think, and, and what's happened before is we've discussed issuing a fine um, and then many people have it, had input on it. Sometimes that discussion has continued across more than one meeting. And then after much discussion, we would all take a vote as to whether or not we agree that a fine should be issued in this circumstance for this particular action or lack of action by the applicant or whoever's in question. So. It seems to me that my understanding so far has been issuing of fines is is a very last um, resort, very last resort, long thought out um, process. Um, now, you don't want to issue them and not collect them. Well, yeah. <coughs> no. That's what I was told yeah. by the town manager. So he's he's going yeah. to take the book away if we <laughs> right. if we don't enforce them. He doesn't want you to use it as a bargaining right. chip. Right. right. Oh, right. Yeah. So right. Uh, number so, one of enforcement says the commission or the administrator can issue these fines. Yeah. But fines or citations. It's, oh, sorry. It says the enforcing person shall mean any member of the commission or, or its agent. agent. Yeah. Well, I think that's right. I think I think Chuck should have the authority in the moment with his knowledge to see a violation and issue a fine. But if that I'm isn't not, what we... Or a citation. Or a ci I think it's either. a citation is what okay. we issue. Yeah. And then it's and brought then to the commission. Discuss. We can withdraw that citation, continue okay. to enforce it as you described, with the ultimate hammer being the fine. So, so I guess coming back to that, that, I guess that's where this language on this policy is helpful that right. that the agent will issue an enforcement order to the owner of the property and the contractor. Enforcement if, order. An not enforcement fine. order. Right. So that's where we start getting into the violation right. and an appropriate response to the violation. Fines or no fines or but I think that next section, section two, violations of this policy may well, maybe we should just say at that point, um, the Conservation Commission reserves the right to include fines in the enforcement order as described in We don't have to reserve the right. We already, we have, already it. have it. But just to send out the message as a policy on a policy page, if this text gets added to our website and the word <coughs> kind of goes out, I so would that say there is that some the commission has the authority under the State Violence Protection Act and the state <coughs> bylaws to issue fines fines for violation. Because I, I think um, I think to some degree what we want to start seeing in town is before the fact permission instead of after the fact, you know, habitat destruction. And if we <coughs> show a strong policy up front we might get a little bit more upfront calling. 
that's the intent. That's my hope. Um, and I don't know, I mean, I don't know what strategies have worked in other towns or. Um, you identify a problem, you <coughs> write a letter. If the gentleman or the person doesn't come into the meeting, you take the next step and whatever you deem appropriate. I have never seen a violation written out in the field. Not once. I mean, that's it's just asking for trouble. Yeah, Do yeah, you mean it's an probably. Enforcement order or citation? I've lost you. What? When you say you've never seen a citation, a ticket fining someone, saying, you know, you shouldn't have done that. Here's a here's yeah. twenty five dollars. Go and pay the clerk. Yeah. We have those tickets. Yeah. That we doesn't do. sound effective. You can write down. But our bylaws say that the, that citation can be withdrawn by right. the commission. Mm -hmm. So the process would be, I write it and tell them to show up at the next meeting and if you agree with the action, it says if you do nothing or withdraw it, you can do nothing or you can withdraw it. And then at that point they would need to pay. Yeah. So it, it you know, that and that's like, it probably what I would like to do would be to just do an enforcement order or a letter, bring them in here, and by then everyone knows about it, and then you guys decide yeah. if you want to fire right. someone off. Right, that's right. what historically right. we've done. Yeah. Right, which I think is good, because it doesn't, first it doesn't put you totally squarely on I the don't spot. Think, I think it and needs to be part get, of our... We get to discuss it no. and part of collaborate. Of our yeah, that'd be better. I mean, well, yeah. Police, police issue yeah. a citation. I mean, they expect that to be paid or you're going to court. You know, it's not. We can yeah. go to court, too. We, yeah, we can if we, <coughs> if we have voted the fine. Well, I, you know, just, for, you know, for instance, the the tree guy that just constantly yeses us to guess, and we're always catching him over the course of three or four times in a year. You know, that might be something where some action needs to be taken. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, or, or maybe more, maybe six times a year. So what's what's everyone's thought well, about? Yes, we're still just into language, right? Because it is yeah. already part of the policy. Right. It is part of our regulations and bylaw. So for um, so item two, should we just leave that as is? Well, I thought we were going to take out by fines up to one hundred per violation. Okay. And, and add and reading town bylaws. Yes. General laws. May be punished by fines in accordance with the Reading Town bylaws yeah. and Massachusetts General Laws, Chapter 40, Section 8C. Period. Okay. Um, and we'll just omit the, the last of that, which is administered by the Reading Conservation Commission or its agents. Mm -hmm. Just take the rest of that out. I'm, I'm hoping to get okay. what you're writing down. <laughs> okay, so violations of this policy may be punishable by fines. Uh, Jamie, you said in accordance with. In accordance with Reading Town bylaws and. Massachusetts General Laws. Yeah, what he has there. And Massachusetts General Laws, Chapter 40, yeah. Section 8. Can you strike the rest? Yeah. Okay. And what do you have under number one? Okay, so. Um, okay, number one, the Town of Reading Conservation Commission shall issue an enforcement order to both the owner of the property and contractor if work is being done without authorization as required by both the state and town wetland regs. And then you have violations of? Violations of this policy may be punished by fines um, in accordance with the town, with the Reading Town Bylaws and Massachusetts General Laws, Chapter 40, Section 8C. And we're, we're taking out the hiring a wetland, something or other? Take out, take out that the last, the last the sentence there? Take out. This may require hiring a wetland specialist? That, that whole. Take out that whole that, that one. All one. Yeah. 
Okay, do, should I read it one more time? Anybody Did want? you get it, Kim? No. <laughs> well, you've got it written, you got it written it's down. Written I've down. got it written yeah. down. Yeah, you don't need to read it again. I think it was okay with it. Okay. But we need to get it to Kim. Oh, okay. We'll so get it to Kim. Because we should you have that as okay. a policy in the minutes, but it should, we should have yeah. a book of policies or a yeah. file or something on the web that are our policies. This might be the first one. Mm -hmm. So, so are there any? Uh, Is a Matera cabin policy? That will be the second one. Yeah. Okay. Um, so, any? Should we vote on this just to sort of ratify it tonight? And, um, I would like to know if you need. Would you like to have town council review this? Um, I think it might be worth having a discussion with them about an enforcement policy. Enforcement. Just so they know what our thought is on it. You know, we're coming up with a policy. This is a tree cutting policy. We have to. Although it, I brought it. May work, it may yeah. work, you know, if we yeah. change the title yeah. to something else. But yeah. that but we're just say doing tree cutting, if I remember what you read correctly. No, it didn't. No. But it did at the title. It was title. pretty broad. about tree cutting. <laughs> yeah, I know, but it, Kim. Does the same thing about tree cutting? No, the word is the last one. But it's the tree cutting policy. It does it have to be in the If it's a tree cutting policy, it probably ought to say something about tree cutting. The title title doesn't do that? Policy for tree cutting. You want to change it to tree cutting policy? <laughs> no, I don't I you know if it does, it does. I mean it doesn't matter to me. But I mean if it's gonna be a tree cutting policy, we should say something in there about tree cutting. I think. Disturbing, modifying, removing. It doesn't have to be so specific. Well, so we well I, guess, I guess part of that original language I had in there for the beginning that Brian had proposed kind of pulls us back out of this little niche of tree cutting. And we're talking about, you know, like filling yeah. or building a wall where it's not supposed to be built or. Um, I, I dumping think sand from a baseball field in the wetland. Yeah. It'd be great to have like yeah. on the website filling policy, and it could be the same. And it could be word. the exact same thing. And because people look want to for know, that, yeah, you know, yeah, that's like where do I fit? Well, I think this is kind of applicable broadly to any of those and we can just violation categories. But I, I think we just have a tree cutting policy at this moment. I'm I'm yeah. willing to call yeah. it a tree cutting policy I, I, as a starting place. I don't think we should call it a tree cutting policy because no? it doesn't say anything about cutting trees. But if you have it labeled like on the website, tree cutting policy, and it's the title, and then it's saying all of that stuff. I think, I, I mean, Can I. Can you read that first paragraph? I don't think it would be that big of a stretch. Both the owner of the property and contractor, if work is being done without authorization as required by both the state and town wetlands regulations. Yeah, I mean, if you want to call it a tree cutting policy, generic. say we should change the word. If work is being done, if we should, should change those words to tree cutting. How about if tree but, work? But that mean, language. If tree work, why don't we say that? <laughs> if that, tree work is being done. But that language covers tree cutting and everything else. Oh, it covers tree it covers cutting, everything. but it covers everything. And is that, right, I which, think is, that's okay. which is okay. Because it's, I mean, it could be cutting, it could be trimming, it could be. an airstrip in there, I mean, it's everything. We could have an airstrip I mean, policy. I can see. Filling. Dumping. I think that you know everyone's going through this technology route now. Everyone has the iPhones, and if we can get a website that has our policies on it, and even if it says the same thing, and then they can find that. Hey, I'm a I'm a harborist. I want to find out if they have any. Thing anything about tree covered. cutting and it's right there it works and I think this works for everything so we could just have different title pages and, yeah and yeah. change it or change it around it seems to me that it works it would I mean I when I think about things, I don't think about if I was cutting a tree would this get me to, to kind of move down to the town and, and get a start talking to someone and yeah. it would yeah what, what, what's yeah. the objection to putting the word tree in the words of the policy we if could we could make a tree cutting. work. Because if we approve yeah. a po an enforcement policy and then get permission to put it under different titles, then we're done, and yeah. we don't have to keep coming back. 
So and I think that's what we've kind of fallen into tonight. Well, if we want another policy for filling, we just change the word tree work to filling work. Exactly. Sure. Right. Let's that's do it. Let's, but if we're going to, let's either not, let's call it our general policy or put the word tree in the text of well, the policy. Well, this policy for tree cutting should be at the top or, or something that they can search on. Yeah. I mean, it's not broken down in the enforcement fines with where filling is any different than cutting a tree down. Yeah. Um, so someone thought it was grouped together back then. What do you think, Jamie, about putting just the phrase tree in front of the word work there? That any tree I work? I think that would be better. Well, why don't we do that? Um, any objections? Any other questions? or? <laughs> Comments? Okay. How about um, how about a motion to approve our new policy for tree cutting? As as um, as drafted budget. tonight in Kim House. So moved. Second. I'll second. All right. All those in favor? Well, I'm, uh, just, More discussion. I, I'm still going to vote against it, and I'll tell you why. Because by citing both the contractor and the owner, we're diluting the responsibility. And if the homeowner, the landowner, is clearly it? responsible, then I think it's uh, it's preferable. Well, then should we say and or because they could be both responsible? They could be, could be both responsible. So do you want to leave it like that? That it doesn't have to. No, always I'm, have to I'm be not both? suggesting we, we change it because I think that, that we we've discussed it enough and have the policy. Yet. Okay. Well, okay. we've discussed the policy, but not who gets the violation. I think it's in there. Well, yeah, we say and, and I'm just saying, should, should we think about, does it always have to be both? Well, we always have discretion. In the case, right? It's like finding the workers instead of the corporation. I mean, think of That's Galvin Circle, for example, saying. where the owner got the tree cutter, to or the tree cutter got the owner to sign a waiver, a release. A release. But we, yeah. under that policy, we, we would find the tree cutter, it wouldn't, it wouldn't a be release. a fine, it would be an enforcement, an enforcement order. order. And whatever is stipulated, right. whatever we think is appropriate yeah, in that not. enforcement order um, is appropriate in that it's enforcement not, order. Not fine, well, then why don't we right? just say and so, or then? Instead of saying and, just say, if we say and or, it means you could just be the owner or it could be the contractor, it could be both, but it's our discretion. Doesn't that um, open it up for modifying? Yeah, that's a good point. Suppose, uh, suppose Northeast Tree came in and said, and the person wanted their trees cut, and they said, fine, we'll cut them. And the owner said, well, don't I need you to get a permit? He said, oh, no, you don't need a permit. We do this all the time. Then, we'll then just we come in and them. cut them in. Right. And right. the landowner right. says, okay, well, you got to sign this release, and he signs it. Right. Are we going to then find the landowner? Yeah. yeah. And or allows for future discretion. Yeah, I, I like I, that. I could vote for that, probably. But I think and or also gives... Um, if if Chuck's in the middle of an event and um, you know uh, we have are a we are we written policy that we're not writing fines in the field right not fines but an enforcement order I mean yeah, if get written if, in the field either well, no cease, but cease, cease work. but that would um, you know if if Chuck's in a situation where it seems clear to him that a certain enforcement orders in his judgment need to be written to one or the other or both um, is he going to come back here with and with that and or language um, get sort of you know um, you know chewed out or corrected by us because we didn't think it was an appropriate response you know I think part of this language gives him clarity of what judgments to make when he's out there with which enforcement orders to sign. But it should be in his discretion as well. Okay. As he, as he's, when he's on the site seeing what's going on, he shouldn't be pinned down with it. I have to do both or I have to do just one. He has the discretion. Because he could do it and then we can bring it to us and then we can debate that and say, well, well I think you guys should have this discretion and I shouldn't have it. I, you should have the ability to Yeah, that, and then, that is, and then deal with the details later. Well, I, th I think Nika made a great point. 
I don't want to feel like I understand something than bring two people in here and the first thing is someone says is I don't understand why we have both people here you know it doesn't make any sense to me if, if it's and then hey it's clear. I can say you said both yeah. if it's but in that Galvin circle where the tree cutter signed a release. But in but in that case, would they would have... Would you bring them both in here? I didn't see a release from that guy. What, what Was there one? We were told there was. We I were, never we saw We were told it. there was. And in that case, they could have provided that to yeah. us. And that would have probably well, turned us right. to say, well, looks like you knew it. But, you know... Yeah, so Gavin gave the Circle, responsibility. So we we would take that into consideration. Immediately. I've never seen no one once you discover it, I've never seen anyone just keep working. They usually stop. That right. that that happens, that's not a problem. Um, but then there's a point where you're trying to collect some names and you know, and who do we have here? We have three guys and we have the homeowner. It's easy to mm -hmm. find the homeowner's name. We don't have to stick around for that. But if the you know, the the arborist or the you know, guy with a chainsaw is part of part of the problem. Yep. You know, and I tell right. them. Right. I mean, that, that's part of the problem. Is that, that's why I think and or. Think of another case, and we've seen this, I think, where um, a but, tree cutter cut uh, trees on somebody else's property. He's doing the neighbor, and he goes over the property line and cuts the tree. If that's a violation yeah. of the well, person that didn't even want their trees cut and got them cut at, is he going to be cited too? That, that in that case, it would be only the uh, arborist. Yeah. Okay. So that's why I think I like Terry's idea of and or. But but Chuck doesn't. But I think but I think too I think we've been um, judicious judi judicious enough to take all the information that we're provided, and and if it comes to light that somebody didn't in unknowingly cut on somebody else's land you know then is there is there a way to rescind uh, an enforcement well, I, order I, I think you know I think I think we've shown ourselves to be um, concerned with all the facts of the matter and I'm what willing is an enforcement to order any, anyways it's just I mean, it's write just it a out notice and it's just of, hey just come on in or if they don't you have to take the next step it's really and just just something uh, if the if the homeowner didn't pay attention to it it would be up to you guys to take the next step I mean I just want to be able to get you know why you know if, if um, a tree service says why do you need my name and address because I'm you know because I need that because you're both getting enforcement orders on this site and I have no discretion in that because it says both need to have it well, that, that, could you read that first paragraph back to us? The Conservation Commission shall issue an enforcement order to both the owner of the property and contractor if any, any, tr oh, any tree work is being done without authorization as required by both the state and town wetlands regulations. Right. That says we shall. That means we have to, in mm -hmm. compliance with that policy, issue it to both of them. And I don't think in every case we have to. We we have to issue to both of them. So if you keep, you put the shall, leave the shall in, and change the and or, that's I'm then good we with. we have to act at least on one of them. That's right. Or maybe both. Or maybe both. And Chuck will have to in the field have decide, the discretion to decide that to decide to issue it to one of them or both of them. Under our policy, he has the uh, the the option and the authority to issue it to one or both. Once they're issued, what is our authority? Well, our policy to was to issue to them both. That's where we started with this. We right. can't change it when we get down to the end. So we, we wanted to issue to them both. This is what we started to do. I mean, I, I didn't know the and or thing, but, you know, Anika made a great point. I don't want to get stuck doing this. So it's if it's just the homeowner, say that. It's just the, if it's both, say that, but don't leave me because, because this tree guy had a book of, um, of rule of thumbs that he thought qualified him to cut down every tree that he, that he felt, you know, got into that zone. And he didn't even check the law. You know, if a tree was in striking distance, I can take it down no matter where it is. This is one of his statements. 
And, and so this guy is dangerous. This guy is, how many people did he say it to? So to me, that's the person that needs to be educated more than the homeowner. Right. But we didn't discover that until after the fact. Right. But this, I mean, this part, if we substitute and or, based on the case, you use your discretion to issue it to one of them, the other one, or both of them. So by putting in the and or, we are inherently giving Chuck our confidence that he could do one, both, or the other. And it also communicates right. to the owners and contractors that they are both potentially liable. Right. Okay. That's what I mean by so, potentially liable. That means we bring it for a discussion. Yeah. Right. And then we, we decide, okay, right. maybe, maybe just one, or maybe just two. Right. So maybe the policy is to no enforcement order, which which I'm fine with, letter telling them both to come into the meeting and then you guys decide whether an enforcement order for both or, or whatever. Yeah. I'm just trying to, I don't want to just say something and it not be backed up. That's, yeah, that's no, where I'm at. But I, I think there's so some... I'm just back it up until we get something that everyone can well, agree. Well, I think there's strength in the words and in the document of an enforcement order, not to make more paperwork for you, Chuck, but... Um, I think the phrase and the document of an enforcement order makes people stand up and say, oh, wait, this is serious. Right. Let's pay it. Let's, I better show up uh, right. and right. find out what, how, what this means and so what the impact is. Issue the enforcement order as soon as possible rather than waiting for two weeks or whatever. For the because I, yeah. I, I really get the impression that a letter, even a certified letter, doesn't necessarily carry the same weight as an yeah. enforcement <clears throat> order. Yeah, I agree with you. I mean, that so, poor guy, Johnson Circle, the landowner, when we said enforcement order, he thought he was going to jail. I think I think it kind of paints that picture. Yeah. Um, so, so and um, he paid attention. So, if adding that and or means we are trusting Chuck's judgment in the case by case moment to make that determination, then um, I just want to understand if that's that's everyone's, um, if everyone is okay with so that. So if I'm issuing an enforcement order, are you saying that you're obligated to follow through? Yes. Well, yeah. And But that enforcement order could be, when it's brought before us, it could be as little as you stop work, you're all done, or it could be you plant 50 trees as part of the enforcement. That's at our discretion to determine the, uh, the, the, uh, the content of the Depending on the offense, right? Yeah. Using our yeah, wisdom and judgment, if okay. we have any. That's, that's okay, because then one, if there was no negative effect, we said, okay, just stop doing stop. this. You're done. Or, so this doesn't really impact the, the owner if he was doing it inadvertently. Yeah. Yeah. Otherwise, we could slam it to him and say, plant 50 trees. Right. Okay. Are we ready to vote on this, or is there any more discussion on this? Yeah. Did, well, I guess I would move we amend the policy to change the and to the, and or the, yes the the property owner and the contractor to the property owner and, and or the contractor and Chuck just so you know that's at your discretion we don't have to add with our support when we come here and discuss it we could just have no effect or that doesn't need to be added here. So I would say that every tree it. person, just so you guys know, what if I said if every tree person who hasn't been here already is probably going to get one, get one of these because it's it, um, just because they're doing it, they just they don't know our policy. So it's time yeah. to, to stop let them that. know. I mean that's that's where I'm at, and I just yeah. and mm -hmm. I'm I'm just concerned that it's gonna it's, because the first time you say. Why? I mean, do you understand the result of saying something like, why do we need to do this? That just, that is almost like you work your life to try to make a great reputation, and the one thing you do wrong, they remember you by. And it's the same thing. It's an unwritten rule. You can't, yeah. you know. It's hard to anticipate what the commission wants. It's practically impossible. And it's unfair to come in here and be 
and and have the other guy told that it probably shouldn't have happened. Yep, yep. But I, yeah, yeah. But I think what we're saying tonight is, and please speak up if this is everyone else's, you know, uh, what you're thinking, is that with this policy, we're giving um, you the reins to issue those enforcement orders as needed um, as these violations come up. And, you know, now we've got the policy. Now there's no, there's no questioning of you because we have the policy. Mm -hmm. So. I mean, the only thing you could add to that is I could call, uh, you know, talk to the chair prior yeah. to that. So. Which I wouldn't mind. I mean, I always don't. I don't want to be out front. So. So. Um, is there any uh, motion to ratify this tonight? Well, I, as I as drafted, well, yeah. or would you like? Well, what's we should probably. I think we should probably vote on the Andor clause first. Well, are there any, let me ask, are there any objections to the and or clause? No. Okay. Okay, so there's, so. Um, so it's and or. Yeah. No. Yeah. Are you doing that voting? Move, uh, move to amend the policy, add or off. Uh, it's changed to and or. It's just changed. It is, it is changed. There were no objections to that, okay. so that. no one would vote against it. <laughs> so, um, well, how about we sort of ratify this by, um, a motion to uh, enact this policy as it's drafted. I think there's a motion on the floor and seconded. Is there already? Yes. Okay. All right. Question. There was one other question. Somebody said pass it before town council. I don't know. Is there a need for them to? Did we need to discuss with them before we finalize no. anything, or just, just Actually, let them know this point, is what we're thinking? Uh, I don't think we're going beyond the limits of our existing think so. regulations. We're just kind of and stating laws, this is so what we should be doing. Yeah. yeah it's only a policy. It's only a policy, so. I it was think. mentioned at the last meeting. That's why I brought it up. Okay. It kind of makes common sense that it we wouldn't have to pass it by town council. I think I think it says something in here where the commission can make policy. Um, I think it's in the bylaw, though. I don't have that. So there's a motion. It's seconded. Draft policy. All those in favor of approving this policy. Okay, unanimous. Woohoo! First policy. Okay, so I didn't want to tell you this because I didn't want to sway any votes, but I actually got a call after we sent out those letters. I actually got a call from a tree service who I had, had never really heard from before. Was it was it somebody you'd <clears throat> seen working? Well, I don't in want to town? mention any names, but okay. But um, yeah, definitely works in town. One one service calls me every single time. Another one's probably pretty much as big um, never hear from them and I got a call today and I was pretty happy were they asking for an upfront they I need to go to a site tomorrow and oh, give them an opinion. is Northeast tree the ones that usually calls you yeah they're above board yeah and you didn't say why are you calling Great. have an old UNH grad uh -oh. yeah okay so good company here okay um, well it sounds like words getting out at least to well, you know, uh, those guys in Northeast Tree, I mean, they, they just, it, it, it takes a lot of time to clean up problems, and I think they understand that, so. Yeah, yeah. Well, let's get on to the next uh, old new business item. So the conservation land mowing list. Um, why don't we... I put that on there because we have three, and okay. I wanted to see if I could, you and me could figure out a time to go up to Bear Meadow and mark that out, because that was the next thing that I needed to do up there. And I've never been to Lobster Pond or whatever that's Lobs called. Pond. <laughs> Lobster Pond. Lobster Pond. I wish it was Lobster, Lobster Pond. Pond. That'd be nice. <laughs> they don't come that far up uh, river. <laughs> Does that need to Lobster be marked? Uh, Lobster, Lobster Pond. Pond used to be the water intake for the town of Reading Street. Yeah. Um, and also date for mowing. Yeah, we have, we, we have a date. We have a date. Let's, um, let's just get that one. right now. We just it developed it once a year. Did it last year. Uh, I was going to say, Chuck, why don't you um, sort of debrief everybody about the meeting? So Chuck and I had a meeting 
with um, the DPW and engineering um, about mowing. It was last Tuesday. Um, and engineering? Engineering was there. Who was there from engineering? Mr. Cool. Zamboris and Chris. George, Chris Cole. Um, what do they have to do with mowing? There's, there's, they're, they're well, trying there's the to work easements. together instead of having separate groups. Because the cemetery, and I think that's the why they're part of this. People do most of the mowing in town. The, the cemetery people. Park, and then the parks. Well, are the cemetery people cemetery. managed by the highway? By that George? No, George Trezari, is that his name? Yeah. yeah. He's DPW. He's the guy I need to contact about mowing now. Okay. So he's the lead guy in mowing. So it doesn't matter who does it. You know, it's... And he was at the meeting, too. Yeah. So is Jeff Zager and his assistant as well. Joe but, Huggins. Yep. Yep. Joe Huggins, the new guy. So... Was he already at the of the He used to work for the school department. I, I, I know Kim would probably know. Yeah, school the department. Facility. Yeah. Oh, really? Okay. So we, we went over topics uh, like mowing. And specifically, specifically, it was Lobs Pound, uh, Bear Meadow, and am I miss saying Lobs that? Pond. Lobs Pond. Are you sure? Lobs I don't know. Who cares? Lobs Pound. Isn't yeah, it? yeah. Lobs Pound, Birch Meadow, and um, Castine Field. Uh, Bear Meadow and Castine. Yeah. So those were the three places. We asked about signage at Castine. Yeah. And everyone just sort of went. Jeff, Ooh, me, Jeff remembered you? it being dropped off at his desk. And that's about the last that's where we, we got seem to. to have heard of that. <laughs> so <laughs> so good. <laughs> um, I know. That was a big effort getting that to them. Um, so um, we talked about doing mowing at Bear Meadow. Um, was it once or twice a year? Everything right now is once a year. Okay. I think um, it had been too, and, we, we, and it was. We and then, it was a right. So, sufficient. what happened there, just to catch everyone up, is someone said, "Oh, up top, the, we're, the grass is getting turned into uh, dirt." And up top, at Bear Meadow. About Bear Meadow. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The observation. And there was some problems there, so they said just mow it once. So we kind of picked up with this once because, you know, we, let's see what happens with once. Um, I've been getting an awful lot of complaints. More ticks that way, or yeah, I think it needs to be more twice. Here. And, and most people I talk to that are out there think that they're just getting too much trickers coming up, they're getting too big, and, and with ticks, I know people are mowing up there on their own. They're the bad. neighbors, yeah, are going into the yeah. bare meadow and mowing it, yeah, because it's so bad. Okay, well, so. Well, that maybe sounds, maybe maybe we need to do it twice a year then. Sounds okay. <laughs> that, I mean, that's what I'm hearing yep. from not only wildlife people but also people that use the area. Okay. Well, I think I think Chuck and I they had a question as to where the limits of mowing should be in Bear Meadow, mm -hmm. and that's why Chuck wants you yeah. to yeah, I, uh, help yeah, help um, try and get that. There's certain areas I'm all for expanding the area. Uh, yeah. I don't think it's resource, so how could it possibly be? So it's just conservation land, right? Yeah, there's, well, the, actually, it's, it's wet quite often between the two meadows, mm -hmm. but I don't know if it really classifies as a resource area. Hmm. Not much there. We go and cut it's a resource area, we're going to have to find ourselves. <laughs> we're going to find both the contractor I mean, and the owner. So we'll send we ourselves an enforcement twice. order. I, guess, I mean, you have to bring an auger and see what it is. <laughs> there soils you go. There. Oh. <laughs> are, you, are you talking about I mean, where the, the wall is between the two? Yeah. Well, down, first, down by those I'm old apple sure trees? It's not a resource area. I think it's just a birch water table. Just grass. Yeah. yeah. Where those it's old apple trees are and stuff? No. Oh, really? Oh, okay. Wet there? Yeah, it's yeah. wet there quite a bit. But, but, but there are no wetland plants that I've seen. No, no. You spend more time than I do, but I haven't seen mm -hmm. wetland plants. No, right. no. Okay. Well, you guys get together on it somehow and. and yeah, you know your schedule out. right now? No. Um, Fridays, any day after one, 
Are you, you're, I know you're at work. Um, but fun, can I take some Fridays off? Yeah. Not this Friday, though. On Sunday. But um, next Friday? Yeah, I could do that. <coughs> okay. So the mowing is scheduled on October 1st. This was something we've decided at our last me the meeting that we discussed this. J just for Bear Meadow, or are we talking about all three areas? Well, it was just for Bear Meadow, but now Lobs Pound is going to be added to that. Yeah, we definitely need to. I mean, anything that was mowed before. I mean, this just keeps coming up one at a time. That's why I wanted to have yeah. them all kind yeah. of on the plate. Yeah. So, and then if we need to figure out where we're mowing down at the lobster pound um, we should check that out too if we have time yeah, yeah they're close enough to each other yeah. um, what about castine or? castine is where they mow we don't have to ask them they just mow too far so too we got to grab those signs or we got to get jeff to put those signs in or flag it so yeah. they know where to put the signs in well i mean what what they're doing now is is okay you know it's interesting so I was at Sturgis Park uh, Tuesday and somebody was mowing out there and there was a little bit of cutting down the slope of one of the banks and I, I and it was a large mowing machine and I just I thought what's our mowing plan for Sturgis Church, we ought to put that in. what is there's that no, there's no signs there yet are there? no, no. But we did talk no. about that. So, so a lot of the vegetation between the, those pine trees near the water spigot, a lot of the vegetation between those pine trees and the river, a lot of that is kept in the low-lying area. Do you know what I'm talking is about? Is kept or cut? Is cut. And oh. No, it's kept. It's tall. It's like taller than me. It never cut? doesn't. I don't know when it's cut, but um, some cutting was done last week. I don't know the plan for that particular field, but that should be another one that we know about. Sturgis Park. Yeah. Sturgis. Let us know when you're mowing it. It doesn't seem to work in that direction, though. No. No, it doesn't. It needs to be no mow until we say to mow, something like that, in this area. I mean, you that's know, what we could. Uh, on. Well, eventually, we'll need signs there, too. At Sturgis? Yeah. Yeah, if they ever yeah. file that, uh, they were going to yeah. file. Okay, yeah. They were going to they were going to expand the wetlands there, weren't they? They were going to fill the wetlands. They fill wanted to they, expand and create. They, right. they talked about that at the meeting too. Was that that was Sturgis, wasn't it? Yeah. Well, they want to yeah. do it in Castine also. Where's the one that yeah, has the drainage trench Castine. around? That was. That, that was Castine. Castine. Yeah. So that it's Castine. a drainage trench and it's definite wetland plants on the flat area that they flood mm -hmm. but we're not he George asked us not to consider that yeah yeah so Cassian field, field has a long history and that whole Cassian field is jurisdictional wetlands there's no question about it I mean it's the soils if it was left uncut they'd be all wetland vegetation what we have agreed to, if they leave the cattails and the other natural vegetation around that drainage ditch on the edge, they can cut the field and play soccer. That's the agreement we've, we've reached. But we should never um, concur that casting field is not a weapon. So George wants to add topsoil to casting. the field. Yeah. That's his plan. Well, it's it's would be uh, we went through this when we did the Birch Matter Master Plan, where they wanted to do that, and we we explained to him in great detail that um, they couldn't do it because the uh, amount of wetland they would fill to replace two to one would be more area than they have. And you you guys wouldn't allow a bank for. Uh, restoration somewhere else or is there another spot that I mean I don't know if that works they, but they, that wouldn't be they considered could, they could propose it but when we did the Birch Meadow master plan there was nowhere near enough area to accomplish that 
that they could we could find at that time. But if they want to look okay. again, we could consider it. But also, there remember there's a uh, four is it four or five thousand square feet? I can never remember. Five thousand mm. square feet uh, under the state program. You even with two to one replication, you can't take more than five thousand square feet. And I think Castine Field is more than five thousand square feet. I mean, that's only ten by fifty. Yeah, no. definitely. Yeah. It's ten yeah. by fifty. It is definitely. Yeah. <coughs> it's also storage. It's also definitely <coughs> close storage. Yeah. It's it's so. Um, Oh, absolutely. Yeah. So it's always wet. Absolutely. Yeah. And uh, and the other issue is if I'd be happy if they never cut that grass around the drainage ditch. Uh, they seem to want to cut it because it's ticks, but we leave it growing all summer when people are out there anyway. It definitely shouldn't be cut on October 1st because those cattails don't go to seed till after that. And that's the purpose of leaving them there. To, to have the Let cattails. it go to seed. Yeah. And um, so if they never want to cut it, you know, leave that swath of natural vegetation that's there and never want to cut it, I'd be good okay. with that. But if they have to cut it, it should be after October. After the, the cattails have gone to seed. Okay. In my opinion. Well, thanks for that update reminder of what was done um, there were other things that we talked about too um, but I, those are in my notes at home <laughs> so there's a lot of uh, access roads throughout the town that haven't been maintained and it was they just my impression of what we were talking about was you know it's always the this stress between conservation and DPW they want to go in there and just reestablish them and we were trying to figure out when conservation needed to be notified of certain things and have a, the ability to check stuff out and that's that was that was unresolved and I had the opinion that George wanted to write a general permit that allowed him to do basically whatever he wanted to do you know, wide parameter of work um, let him without notifying us. Let him follow an application for that general permit, and then we can discuss it. Well, he has no general. He's, he's down to one general permit. Right. Well, he needs to file him for the yeah. other work. Well, we were, you know, the discussion was we understood what he wanted, and we told him what we, what we want, and then now hopefully we'll get something. I mean, he, he didn't roll over for, and by no means. It, it's, no. you know, if you're going to, that one down at, um, Walker's Brook it seemed to me that that had never been cut in the last couple of years and <laughs> they said that it had been they said they cut it every year that was very didn't odd. they say that last year? I don't year? know but there's no way that that was cut last year that's too high yeah Frank Maggie's grows fast it's only like 12 feet though that's one year's growth yeah they Frank do Frank Maggie's but goes from go. nothing to that every year They don't grow, I mean, they're annuals. They don't grow on top of each other. Yeah. I, I didn't see, yeah, I wasn't, I didn't think, you know, it was just, it was so thick on either side. I mean, sure, they could have yeah. widened the road a little bit and made it look like that, but I don't know. I don't, I yeah, can't I remember was I've been there. I was surprised, but, I mean, somebody else helped me out here. Didn't he say he cut it every year? He did say he cut it every year, and it was hard to understand that. It was hard to even understand being there that there was a road there before. <laughs> yeah. 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 Because, a road there now. <laughs> because, I mean, it got trampled with all the rock and vehicles. and I, Because at the end of that road, it just seemed, it didn't seem, you started to walk out past the end oh, of that yeah. road. It didn't even seem like there was anything raised. No. Or remotely gravelly at the and end of that. that and it. I mean, it hadn't been a lot of rain. So, so maybe he and cuts, but there was standing no water at the end of the road he built, as a matter of fact. Yeah. yeah. So, so it. Uh, I mean, how it was hard the, to understand. The process is it, hey, Joe and Timmy, go out there and take the, uh, you know, the D10 and, and you know, right. clear that road. And that's what they do. But if conservation is, is involved, we could go out there and 
maybe walk it or flag it or, or yeah. at least establish where it starts and finishes. I think we would be more conscious about trying to at least yeah. be on the same road and to get a look at this, see all these questions. I mean, it definitely has to be there. I get that. Yeah. But it didn't have to happen this way. It may have ended up a lot wider than it was. So. It may have. And it, you know what? And the thing is, is that, and they're out there, and they're saying, "Hey, those uh, those sewer manholes are out there somewhere." I looked. I couldn't see them. Well, and they have and to be I more than two or three feet away. And we said that to them, and they said, "Oh no, no, they're there. They're, they're definitely." If, there. if I had they're my probably. way, this is what I would do. If that easement is as important as George says it is, if that sewer is as important as George says it is, and and I, I I have confidence that it is, then we should have a semi-permanent trail out there that would serve both as a nature trail and access to that. To the to that sewer and that nature trail would be as our trail committee builds them with sensitivity to the environment ways for water to pass underneath natural vegetation on the side and it would be maintained as, as both things yeah. right now it's a mess and then they go in there and they get stuck and then it's a bigger mess I think if it's that important they should have a maintained trail. and an environmentally sustainable trail yeah. do you I, want to build something on the other side of the tracks do you need to come out if he needs to get there, then yeah. yeah. We asked something started. The other tracks is definitely the other side of the tracks are definitely part of it. Yeah, mm -hmm. I I agree with you. I re, I definitely agree with you. I could see George um, countering with an argument that says, "What if we really honestly need to get heavy equipment out there to change over some of these, to do some of the work at the manholes that needs to be done?" I mean. Well, but that's an, obviously a discussion to have with in him. In an emergency. But. Well, he wants to establish a road just in case, which is smart. I right. get it. I get that. Mm -hmm. And I think they should establish a road. But um, we did get into the discussion where that was going to be part of the general permit to do what you just saw happen in uh, Walker's Brook. Yeah, we were and like because it was an established easement. And we said, well, that's where we didn't agree. And there was yeah. that kind of back and forth um, going on. So, so it, it kind of came down to George. You're gonna, or you know, somebody's gonna have to come up with a whole list of exactly what types of activities right. are maintenance are approved. Are yeah, you know, and um, and if you're gonna have a mowing plan, let's get a map that shows, or a maintenance plan that shows exactly where, in what parts of town, and what's the frequency of mowing and the dates, you know. Um, Something that's easy for people to understand and clear for everybody to understand. So that wouldn't, I don't know, that wouldn't need a permit. That would be part of the general permit. Mm -hmm. And we said, no, that had gone too far, and it would need a permit. So it doesn't, it wouldn't qualify under our definition or my definition. I think you agreed because it seemed to have grown up and it wasn't maintained, so it was a problem, so that would need a permit. I mean, it's your responsibility to maintain these things, and if you don't, just like the homeowners that were in before, and the trees grow up, and they're not little tiny things. Yeah, yeah. It's a permit. Like the, like the tree growing in that culvert. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, that was a yeah. problem. Yeah. And, um, and, and uh, it, it seemed to me George was saying those mats would work, but they were expensive. Um, well. Are you saying why don't you, too bad. Why don't you yeah. order a bunch ahead of time? And, uh, yeah, you know, sit around we're gonna and, have to. Well, right. I I also gave him. I looked online and um, I found some um, mosquito control district that uses um, a special kind of track mounted, oh, almost nice. harvesting grass cutter, large cutter, that um, they say works. A swamp cutter that yeah. says says Absolutely. it works pretty effectively in wet areas because it exerts a very small pounds per square inch. But the, the issue is not, I mean, cutting the grass is part of it, but he needs to be able to get out there. If that, what did he say, it was 36-inch sewer, that a third of the time sewage flows yeah. through, mm. yeah. it's through a wet area. If that soil gives and that sewer probably breaks, we're going to have all that yeah. raw sewage in the wetland. Yeah, so we don't want that. So he's going to have to get out there with a pretty big piece of equipment yeah. if that happens. That's why a permanent access roads that's maintained with environmental sensitivity is what he really needs. Yeah. 
And if it's that important, I think it is, the town should cough up the money to do it. And they should come up with a good plan for it and yeah. say exactly where they want to put them. Yeah. So I mean, if that, if that sewer had broken and they went out with the equipment they used before, that equipment would be sunk and the raw sewage would just be going into that wetland at a rate of about uh, um, <laughs> 10,000 gallons per day. Yeah. So I think the onus is on engineering right now to come up with a lot of solutions and to provide a lot of more information. So. Yeah. Can we go home? Well, how about the, how about the last couple of things? Uh, so, any more? Do you, did you want to add about that, Chuck? Or no, I think okay. uh, Jamie is right. I mean, yeah. write write a permit. I mean, yeah. just just remember that you, you, we don't want to give away the keys because we just saw what happened. Right. So. Um, so the next item of business, the Peter Sanborn place, we did a site visit over there. Um, uh, Jamie bravely uh, bra went into the poison went into ivy. the poison ivy, sacrificed himself to find the drainage ditch that was just inside what 10, 15 feet, 20, 15 inside 20. the the lawn line. That wasn't on the pictures. I didn't. Which pictures? We didn't take oh, pictures. Jamie walking in there. No. No, you didn't get that. No, I didn't get that. I'll get it next time. Because that would be good for town day. Yeah. So um, so there's a lot of poison ivy. There seems to be a drainage ditch that was dry. Oh, it was dry. It was definitely. dry that appeared to flow, is that north? Yeah. yeah. To the right. Um, and uh, in terms of planting vegetation, what was, I, I think the talk sort of went, if it's native vegetation, um, you know, planting it in front of the existing vegetation, so taking up, plant no, it in lawn. the, plant it in the lawn. That's fine. Is, we would never have a problem with that. Um, and some ornamental or native. But the area to the front south part was, was more, it was not native stuff. We said they could clear that area around. I thought. Which area was that? Well, if you if you you're at the playground and you look to your left. Yeah. Um, that area I thought was just a lot of junk. It was all vines and and uh, I thought we said we don't mind them clearing that out because it wasn't native stuff. But further to the north, there was there was a nice growth over there, and I wouldn't mind touching that. But it seemed like that area to the left, if they wanted to clear that out and put something in. I thought we thought that was a nice idea. Remove and replace? Well, there's definitely going to be some invasive control that has to happen in there. Yeah. Um, otherwise, whatever they plant is going to get swallowed up by what's planted behind it. Um, was Jackie Carson with you on no. that? No, she wasn't. No. She wasn't there. Well, I, I'm, I agree with Terry, but I'm just afraid, given them carte blanche, launch and then next time we go out there that whole thing is manicured lawn. Well we, we had said we wanted to see what Jackie's plan was. Yeah. She wants to definitely. put in one or two apple trees and take those other ones out and wants to put something over here. Let's see what she's really talking yeah. about. But that, that I think that's correct because that because we had no idea just kind of a vague description of I want to replace this or something else. So so what it what, she, what it sounds like she wants to do is remove those two uh, ornamental pines that were Damn eaten, pines. that were to the left of the... They're uh, conifers. We conifers. don't want them, any pines removed. I'm using her, I'm using her words. Um, That's why I get a little worried. Ma, we need to know exactly. Oh, I'm going to cut, cut in that bush. <laughs> that bush is the conifers a 900 the, foot pine. Right, right, comes down. The, the, the short trees that were basically eaten up by deer in in our standing area those two yeah one those two to the left of the playground yeah. that are in the established grass lawn she wants to take those down she, wants, she wants to take to those out them, right i thought she wanted yep. to put some yep. apple or something in yep she says she wants those um taken out um I was wondering, for lack of words, if we could do some vegetation remodeling, possibly blueberry bushes along the wetlands, an apple tree in the corner, 
some sunflowers along the fence, and maybe you have some other healthy suggestions for us. Along the fence, where is like it? That would be to the left. Past oh, those two oh. things she wants to remove. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. But, but those conifers, you would want, if she's taking two out, she should put at least two in. Right? Two of something. Yeah. I still think we need a sketch. Yeah. yeah. I think we need um, a sketch. A clear sketch with all these distances of where she wants the plantings relative to the playground footprint yeah. and, would and, really help and us her out. And best guess of the resource area. Yeah. I think the Boy Scout made a guess of the resource area. Really? I thought you just said it was out there. I don't remember seeing a drawing. Well, he moved it to be 35 feet away, remember? Yeah. Yeah, but I never remember? saw I never saw where it was. I just know he moved it, but yeah. I don't know where he moved it from. Uh, yeah. So, um, so I think we just need from her a sketch. Sketch of her planting ideas. Yep, and I, but at this point, would it be and, and an RDA or would it be... Because well, it's clearly I, close to a resource actually, area. Actually, Chuck, if you could go out there and see if you can get a feel for where the resource area is, that'd be great. Planting and tree removal? Yeah. I have three hours. I need to be here on okay. Friday. Okay. Okay. Hope it's not raining. Okay. So do you have a clear plan going forward? With Jackie Carlson? Yep. I'm going to make sure she's there. All right. Yeah. 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 Start with that. <laughs> okay. And then the rest, would, I'll just find the resource area. Okay. I wanted to, um, so the next item on the agenda is the uh, conservation elections, chair and vice chair. Oh, we were going to do that in two weeks, weren't we? This is two, two weeks. I mean, excuse me, two meetings. That two works meetings? out, too, because Brian's not here anyways. I think I suggested, if I remember correctly, that we do it a month from our last meeting. Any objection to passing it on to the next meeting? I think that's what was the original right. suggestion. Okay. Well, so. let's let's just move that along yeah. then. So to the tenth. Yep. Eight, nine, ten. Yep. Yep. That'll do it. Um, administrator's report. I uh, have a question from uh, if everyone can visualize Wilson Street and Pleasant Street um, the Reading Housing Authority mm -hmm. they had that 25 foot where they can't mow that's mm -hmm. that's been a problem <laughs> it's been a problem because I guess the guy that's in charge doesn't kind of re really under he understands it but he doesn't understand it enough to, to know that he couldn't mow there and um, there's been a lot of back and forth, nothing written down. So we got to a point with this person that there was a kind of cheap little fence there, something like your grandmother would put in next to her garden, kind of delineating a, you know, the, the, the 25 foot. And he wants to replace that with a chain link fence, but not on the Pleasant Street side, just on his property, okay? So to run where those bounds are um, from one end of the property to the other, but not on the Pleasant Street side, but he would like to do it with a minor project permit. 25 feet from the resource area. No, well, you can see where they hadn't cut for a long time, and they just recently got a new landscaping company that did cut it. By mistake. <laughs> Who knows? I don't know. Parallel to the street. Yeah, I'm going to say by mistake. So it is parallel to the street. Yeah, yeah. But 25 feet away. It must be from like the edge of low water, 25 feet away. But it seems to be in that 25 foot area. You know, it, you can see that it was there. You can see the tree. There's like a tree out by the road, and then straight along, you can you can kind of see where it's all rough, rough there. The grass isn't so tight. So um, he wants to reestablish that line and have no problems in the future by putting up a chain link fence under a minor project permit. I'm good with that as long as we're it's, it's 25 feet away. Maybe that's what I'll tell if him. If he wants to move it six feet away to give more yard, then I got a big problem with that. Well, the, the yeah. And the only thing that I would add to that is that it's some, some line seems to have established and they've kind of identified with this line and if it can be figured out between where the tall grass is or these bounds that are in the ground, which I hadn't seen, but he said he uncovered, and Will, it should go there. You know, that's Will, help me out here, but I seem to remember that 
we set that 25 foot no cut as part of an enforcement order because they did something they weren't supposed to. Does that sound familiar to you? Well, if you look at this map here, they're in the floodplain behind, right behind White House. Right. And the basement of the, it's like a crawl space under the house that serves as flood storage under the house. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I don't, I voted against it. I didn't think it should have been allowed in the first place. Um, but yeah, the, I don't remember any issue except that we were required that that be left natural for 25 feet. Yeah, so th it's just it's just owned by like a corporation, and they have people come in and do things. And this guy wants to be able to tell people, and then no one have any confusion over where yeah. you're not supposed to mow. So he's trying to do something pretty much foolproof. Yeah. So that seemed like a good idea. Isn't it owned by the Reading uh, Housing yeah. Authority? Yeah. Yeah, it is. Yeah. So he wants to put a chain on the fence. He would like to. I mean, there was only that, that fence I described, and yeah. then he, he likes a, he will like a real fence now. Well, I think that's probably a good idea if I Yeah, that's what correct. I think. Okay. It's just the fact that it, the minor project permit fact. But, and he's clear that he cannot cut on the wetland side of it. He seems to know that really that, well, but somehow it keeps on getting cut. It wasn't he's not mowing, though. This is the guy's not going out there mowing. He's telling other people. So this is the corner of Wilson and Pleasant, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's right there. And when we were there, yeah. did you notice there was caution tape in his backyard? That, that was what I told him to put up there. Yeah. yeah. I said, you got to get something right away. There's a problem. To, to, okay. Yeah. I was, that, that was a flag to me. I'm like, what's going on over hey, there? Hey, you know, yeah. I just don't sit behind the desk, man. No, I'm, I, I'm know, I know. I know. I know. I'm working my magic. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. No, um, that was a call from a neighbor who said there's a couple of issues, and I went down there and abandoned. What now? Would that would that be? You're saying that's a minor project, or it would no, be an he RDA? Would like to, he would like to do a minor project permit, and I feel like it should be a minor project permit because it was established that there was a there was a fence there. Um, he said that it was asked by Fran, and there was one when I first went out. It wasn't the greatest fence, but. So he wants one. to put in a better fence. And he would like to yeah. put in a better okay. fence. So okay. he's not really changing anything. Okay, it's just making something that should be there a better he type of He said it was talked about there. during the discussions of that project. Okay, okay. Anything else under administrator's business? Um, How about um, how about any feedback? Did anybody make it to the Timberneck Swamp signage meeting last? Oh, Thursday? there's feedback from that. Do you want to hear? Yeah. I got a, I got a call back from Officer Robinson. No. Robbins. Lieutenant, Lieutenant Robbins. That's who it is. Lieutenant Robbins. Um, <laughs> nice. Yep. He's not out patrolling tonight. <clears throat> um, because I just butchered his name. So. Uh, there was a concern from Umbutters to Timbernex Swamp, and they had, and I sent that email out to you guys. Yeah. Yeah. They had a whole bunch of people, environmental police, police, um, anyone who would show up, concerned. And the, the neighbors are adamant about stopping all hunting and now trapping out there in Timbernex Swamp. Mm -hmm. um, and um, it's Marshall. The Marshalls are. Um, sure that there's um, gunshots out there and hmm. they're, they're sure it's not the gun club they're sure it's not the gun club they they believe um, they believe that someone's trapping out there or someone's hunting out there and well, what are our regulations for trapping do we have any no I don't think we don't. do no, you need a state permit you need a special that. permit to trap either Trapping for uh, fur-bearing mammals, you need a permit. Yeah, so you would get a, you would get your so when when they're in season, when they're prime, you're going to be able to trap on your own land. You can do that. And can you trap tra trap on conservation land? If we ever are we silent? So on there's that issue? there's a um, so if you're trapping beavers, so on the MassWeb 
Mass Wildlife website, there is um, kind of a download you can do, and it's to get permission from um, property owners. And I would assume the town would be a property owner that you would need permission to do that. But again, it's you're, how you catching anyone? Someone could be out there doing it now. And I have to tell you, I would I would trap not only in Terranex Swamp but south and north Cedar Cedar Swamp too, and no one no one finds you or catch you. It just seems like it's so natural. So there's no policy that the commission has in writing to stop them, but permission would be needed, you know, mm. that's for sure. And there are licenses you need, um, but not for cage traps. Not for what? For cage. cage traps. So, you know, beaver trapping is like, it's a big deal and you have to get at least two licenses. You need to get your suitcase trap license and you need to get your trapper's license and you know, you have to up, um, renew it once a year, so. But no, I mean, that's, so the homeowners are very upset that this is happening and they want it stopped. And that's, I mean, pretty much the where it ended. The police say it's not happening, though. The police were out there at that meeting and said that, um, it's it could be allowed on the private property in the center of the swamp in the center well, of Timberneck Swamp but only bow hunting but only bow hunting right hunting by guns is prohibited well kind of ready yeah I'm gonna say yes to that but I think um, they're just making sure at this moment but yes that's that's what I believe that it is you cannot fire you cannot shoot off a firearm in Reading. That's who, all there is to it. Who was saying they were pretty sure they were stuck in Timberneck? You said the marshals? They were hunting? Is that what you said? They were shooting. There was gunfire. No, the, the, the two neighbors. homeowners. Yeah, the neighbors. The neighbors, okay. The marshals is their name, not their Okay, position. I kept trying to clarify <laughs> that one. Why <laughs> is marshals we're talking about? Well, you spent some time in the western part of the country. I want to be. Um, so it just seems like so it's, there's nothing resolved about this situation, and uh, I mean, obviously the People don't like hunting they're not very happy about it happening in their backyard there's nothing they can do they feel powerless and they feel like there was um, an agreement that there would be no hunting there when the Commission took it over did you hear all that when they talked to you um, I heard it from emails and whatnot yeah, so um, it, it, do you think they're opposed to hunting or just a fear of, of getting shot. firearms getting shot yeah. near their house Football. Mrs. Marshall definitely likes deer. Don't think they I like it too. Well done or in a stew. <laughs> <laughs> they shouldn't um, breeze to that little bird. Burger. <laughs> but deer, deer burger. Well, it sounds. They, uh, if they really want to stop it, they need to offer to buy the land from the owners. You know, but that's the only solution I see. Yeah, it seems to me that there is a spot that qualifies that right there where you where mm -hmm. you could hunt. And I, you know, shooting is, in my opinion, is completely. I, I, frankly, I don't. I kind of doubt that there's going to be shooting out there. No one's going to do that. Bec you you might qualify for, you know, to be able to shoot a firearm out there. I don't know how that could happen. Maybe through distances, but there's no. certainly a law here in Reading because yeah. you you know state law sure, Reading law I don't think so. But if someone thought didn't look up our bylaw, there is enough room. But the whole idea about hunting is you, you want to keep quiet. Yeah. No one really likes it. Yeah. You're not going to alert everyone to your whereabouts and what you're doing. It's it's a it's a quiet sport. Yeah. So. Yeah, I, I kind of doubt it. I mean, it may have been fireworks or something, but. Are they opposed to bow hunting? Yeah, any kind of hunting. Yeah, they're. I think there's someone just pa who parks in the Charles Street Cemetery and then walks straight in, yeah. and they're seeing this person or they're seeing the truck and they've put two and two together. And then there was a DPW worker working in a culvert just across the same same street, and he was he had a black box, and this black box has become us, you know, a, a beaver suitcase trap, which it, it wasn't because a beaver suitcase trap is about that big looks like a chain link fence and there's no way you're going to be just skipping down the street avoiding With traffic that. you know it's, 
Yeah. It's I don't I don't think that's what it was. It could have been some homemade situation, but we I believe that that was one of the DPW workers from what I was told who often doesn't wear his, you know, his class 3 jacket or and just just walks out and does what he wants in regular clothes and just checking on on his his areas. Okay. So well, sounds like it's gone I don't about know what to do. It, it comes back to us or it's it's Well, kind it's really of, not our issue because the police have to enforce the firearms. We don't allow hunting on our property. I couldn't That's I it. couldn't go to the to the um, meeting, but I minutes. did tell them that we weren't going to put up signs and um, to, to tell the homeowners that that's, that was something we discussed at the last meeting, to say no hunting. It was gonna, we weren't going to put up no hunting signs. It wasn't our responsibility to put them up there. That's it. Yep. So, okay. We'll see what happens next with that, but it sounds like that's kind of at an impasse. So, um, anything else come up that we could anticipate in September? No? I, I think that um, I'm hearing that, um, what's his name? Uh, the pizza place, 306 Main oh. Street, um, oh. is back on track and going to be back in with us. What's his name? Brandon Simpson. Is this the dumpster guy? No. No, no. no this, this is, is Pizza um, World. Pizza World. The one that was oh. like, there were too many parking or too many parking. So that we were, we were is this permit parking. revived? Uh, they were they were out there with the drill rig the other day, oh. and I oh, always really? went over there and said, "You can't be drilling out here. This is a twenty one E site." But I wow. opted to get my coffee and leave. But um, so I couldn't crazy. believe they were drilling on a twenty one E site and they didn't have like our protective gear. And I bet oh, they kidding. didn't have an LSB out there either. Who was doing that? You're kidding. It, it was uh, could look to me be, to be construction type drilling. That they they would have needed uh, permits from us I to know. do that. Uh, yeah, it's within a hundred feet. Even though it would have been something that uh, was they, exploratory, they, may, they still would have had to let they, us know. Maybe they were just cleaning at one of the wells that's already there. I don't know. Or decommissioning it, or yeah. Yeah. decommissioning. Yeah. It he should have asked. Yeah, they still should have. You definitely saw a drill rig out there, and it was. Do you remember what day? Because I it wonder wasn't if a, it wasn't a big was... drill rig. I mean, you know, with the. Uh, yeah, was it like a geoprobe type? Rig? No, it was the back of the truck, and they had something going on, and I, I don't know. I was in a rush and didn't make uh -huh. much sense for sure. Did it look like an environmental company, or was it? If they'd have had on personal protective gear, you I would, would have, have said, said that. yes, but they didn't. But no, like, truck company name. You know. No truck company, no uh -huh. Tyvex, no No, they should have had. They should have. over the license plate? No. <laughs> Maybe yeah, they were. They definitely should have. Yeah, who knows? But the, the project's back on track then? The you have my cell phone on, my cell phone number, right? You could have just said. It was more, I was Call more me. concerned about the 21 E type stuff, you know, if they're putting it boring for a building and they hit contaminated groundwater. Well, they'll, they'll probably hit it, but uh, the soil's the soil's pretty clean. Groundwater's still a little dirty. But Presley, we were there. They were probably drilling right in that clean soil. They're, yeah. They always yeah. seem to go right for the good section. Middle of the, yeah. yeah. Let's well, check it where they've replaced all the soil. Right, right. Well, um, anything else? I've got a couple things. Yeah. Um, yeah. I was talking to Kim about the, the town website, and she says it's still not up to date. And some of the links that are on the new website for conservation issues like maps, conservation land, direct you back to the old website. Mm -hmm. The old oh. website's still alive, or parts of it are. And Homeowners are also getting bad information about wetlands because they can go back to the previous website. I think that's part of the, our problem with. You know. Are there two GIS data layers? I don't know. Oh, okay. I don't know either. I'm just asking. There may be some GIS information on the old website that's still alive. Um, I'm not in charge of the website. I, I'm in charge of it, but it's. Well, no, I know. I'm just. It's 
it would be nice to and it's nice it's always nice to have a great website um i will make a note to i mean there was what what we should do or what you should do is say something like that in an email because then i could yeah you know i have it now but yeah then i could I mean, just there, do something with it during the day there was an issue between the town clerk and the town manager about policy for the website um, which i don't want to go into because i don't know all the details but um <clears throat> there's been miscommunication about it was it another hollering match kim no just an email the power struggle <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah yeah and it and it's not helping us i don't think right, <laughs> at all right um is it is it is it that the management the changeover from the old website to the new website isn't fully paid and the contract that work isn't is that in-house work no it's a virtual know? town hall we can do whatever we want with the website it's just Both that websites? we're conservation agents and clerks and not web designers right. so when it comes to changing things when you do one specific thing it's like you now we have to learn that again and we have to learn it for the first time and you know it's it's we so what Ann was getting help with is IT would come and work with her once a week which was great and I but I think that stopped but I can ask for that to happen again and if I had some you know things to work on I mean yeah. it's never an issue because she's very willing to help out and to do whatever you know whatever we need yeah the other thing is I have, I think I mentioned an email was about the, those two trails committee projects that are done. Cranberry and Dam and the, the dam trail work. Yeah. And the bridge between Kirching Woods and Sledge Woods. Yeah. The bridge still has screws need to be put, doesn't it? I'm not talking about the bridge. I'm talking about the just the trail. The trail part. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, the uh, so the bridge and. Kirchin to Sledge Woods was a special permit. We, we, we filed for a permit for that because it was a new bridge. It wasn't maintenance or anything. It wasn't an RDA, it was an NOI? Well, I don't remember. It's an RDA. RDA is what I had written down. Because I, I thought I was being kind when it was an RDA with a scout. But we just need to um, close out that file. Um, if there's anything I need to. It, there's no closeout for an RDA yeah. because really what you're saying is it doesn't qualify for the real permit, which is a, yeah. a notice of intent. Yeah. But you guys may have a closeout. I don't really. I you generally write a, write a letter when someone wants something. Yeah. yeah um, the I'm scouts fine. may need it for their paperwork, which is not a problem. But we don't have. I don't close right. out every RDA. But the bridge, <coughs> Noah Henning's bridge project, there, he did file. Was that an RDA also? Yeah, it definitely wasn't a notice of intent. And it was a notice no, of intent? No, there was no way it was a notice of intent. No, no, it wasn't. But what I'm concerned about is that he not get approval for the project until it's done properly. And I don't know, I mean, sometimes the Boy Scouts never come back to us and the, the council approves it, approves the project, and we never hear anything more about it. But So what your concern is that we don't approve it or we don't? Yeah, I don't it think, out? I don't. If if conservation commission thinks that the screws should be you know properly installed so that they're going to hold the boards down, <coughs> um, then Conscom should not sign off on the project. You mean? But there is sign no sign off on it from a Boy Scout standpoint. Yeah. Oh, okay. I yeah. agree with that. Yeah. Didn't he get signed up from the trail committee already? Not so, finished the product. No. Okay. But Tom had signed. Well, it sounds like we need someone to go out and look at it, and it sounds like you know the most about well, it. I have, I, and that's why I checked on it the second time last weekend, and the work hasn't been done, so I emailed Noah again. I haven't heard back from him since July 7th, and I'm wondering if I just need to email his father. Um, I shouldn't have to do this, but it's kind of weird. Um, I mean, if he's going for Eagle Scout, he should well, be a little more responsible. Eagle Scouts in the troop? these projects there well, has to be someone in the troop who's overseeing all the well, legal guys no his father was on site there was another yeah. gentleman i'm not sure his no name. it has been generally in, in the troop is there some one guy who no. goes fields no it, 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 it's constantly changing because right. parents always are only anyway. involved when their kids are in the troop
troops and then right, right. then they disappear. Right. So, um, you know, it, I mean, we so had to we had to extensively rebuild a, a bridge in in um, Pinevale that was unpassable, and it was it was approved by a conservation commission. It shouldn't have been. Shouldn't have been. Oh, okay. You mean approved um, after completed? Yeah. Well. So, so. So. And trails committee. So we fixed that. You know, if, if no one ever gets back to this, we'll replace the screws. It's 138 that need to be replaced. And what? Yeah, we what? have the funds. We got our. Um, what's the matter with the screws that they need to be replaced? They're all stripped. They're too short. They're only inch and five eighths screws holding They're down. Five the quarter board. Yeah, five quarter board. So all the boards are loose. Well, they, well, they, will, they will be. be. <laughs> they will be. Only about half the screws are holding, okay. and they're only barely holding. Okay. Maybe. That's half what hours worth of work. What about, what about a what about a letter it's not a from? Big deal, but oh, oh, okay. You you you're willing to take on well, that as part of the well, trails just, committee, or I think what I'll do next is is email his father because I'm not getting any responses, and I think what I'm hearing is they you know, he should complete the project properly. He probably went to college. He's in twelfth grade. He graduated. He just graduated. He's probably, he's probably in college. Like he's um, probably leaving this weekend. <laughs> yeah. All right. So. Yeah. Well, I was going to say, if you're not getting any response, maybe we could just, you could draft some text and we could put it on conservation letterhead if, and if just I, send it to him. If I could share a thought, I think it should be the trails committee that approves or doesn't approve the adequacy of, of what they're doing. Because the trails committee knows more about it than we do. Well, we didn't. I mean, I know we, I've had discussions with the trails committee, and they, they agree that it right. shouldn't be approved and that it needs to be fixed. That, that's okay. where, I mean. Not really a conservation concern about whether the or not the screws the are in place. Just, I mean, we well. could sign off that they didn't damage the wetlands and they complied with the RDA. But to, I, I think it's much better and, and more meaningful coming from the Trails Committee yeah. that what they did meets the objectives of, of the trail. Yeah, I don't, I don't think, well, we did have to shore up the structure also. So um, so I don't, you don't want the structure to fall into the right. stream either. But, right. So, right. But, yeah. Well, I, I think if that, yeah, the front really trails. although I think if it falls, if, it, if it's uh, poorly constructed, it, it will end up in damage to the wetlands. Right, I, I but, agree. So with, there is I some secondary effect. Um, but since there's 50% overlap between the CONCOM and the Trails Committee, I mean. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, it would be, it sounds like a smart idea to go out and check. I mean, this is, a tr a, a, this these bridge, these boardwalks, it's, you know, needs to be constructed in a proper manner yeah. and it needs yeah. to be in the right spot. Yeah. And, you know, we are trusting that it gets done. I mean, it just seems, like it's always one, something we just doesn't get done right and you know, we check on it. Like, I feel bad that it just didn't specify two and a half inch screws, but, you know, we haven't had to do that in the past. Yeah, yeah, but it, but it sounds like you're not getting a response from, you're not getting feedback well, that you need. Okay. Do you know what school they went to? I don't. <laughs> I will track him down. <laughs> nope. And give Will their phone number. <laughs> well, I'll give it a, give it a try, Will, and and um, let let me know if. You decide to take it on, and because I got some kids who really well, it like seems like the tools. scout troop <laughs> would. So these these scouters, they go out there with a group of, of you know their peers, and it seems like somebody's still here that worked yeah, on that project. Yeah. This is all supposed to be his responsibility. He's supposed to organize all the people and all the work. Did he get his? And get the way? finalizing. Oh, yeah. yeah. No, no, no to get his 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 wealth of information, yeah. Kim. Yeah. They're not supposed to go and interfere and do any work for him. Yeah, he actually got a yeah. scholarship for it. <laughs> well, I I could see you want it. I mean, it would be good to get this done before the winter comes, yeah. and and you know, and not let it slide. So I'm glad you're paying attention to that. Yeah, but would you say like a hundred and something screws? Yeah, 138. Yeah. That's, that, yeah, you could, that wouldn't be. Oh, it's a quick job. It's yeah. Just, yeah. I don't know, you got to take 838. Sounds like a lot to me. I know. 38 <laughs> Sounds like a lot to me. 276. But they're already pre-drilled. Yeah, you don't have to drill any holes. Yeah, go out there with a, 
buddy and a case okay. of beer. Well, yeah. Be good. But this is something well, we could do that. Yeah, let's move on. So, um, I, if I don't get to bed soon, so, I'm, any, I'm any, be Anything trouble. else, Bob? Um, no, so what time do you want to meet? Next Friday? Friday? I could, uh, next Friday, I could, Sorry, you know, anytime, like uh, 8.30 on. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, bills? N any bills? None? There are no bills. There are no bills. Great. Um, minutes? Um, any? Uh, uh, Jamie, you said you had something. I had something on oh. one. On the oh, one. I, I move we approve the minutes from August 13th. August 13th. Okay. Motion I, I had a comment second. about one of them. Um, I, I have a comment too, but you go yep, first. Go ahead. Okay, on Colonial Drive, we're talking about the walls. Um, there's two different walls they were talking about. I think we have to distinguish which wall we're talking about when we, because they say that um, you need to be concerned about design and, and we'll ask for detailed plans of the wall, but which wall are we talking about? Is it the one between the pool and the yes. and the house? And then we shouldn't mention the other one at all. Is this the one on the plan? Yeah, that's true. So if we say we're concerned about this wall, and we, if, it, if plans are necessary, then we need to see them and not mention between the pool and the, and the lawn is because that one we didn't want to approve. But we did discuss it. And these are supposed to be minutes yeah, but of we what do, we, we discussed. But in, this doesn't say which, which wall we're discussing. Right, I agree with that. But that final comment, the commission agreed a separate problem would be need for a wall, we can say, Around on the, the uh, down gradient side of the pool, if yeah. you'd like. Oh, yeah, okay. Yeah, you're, you're right, right. So, so, so maybe it's... Okay, so gradient downhill. Thank you, James. And Why use um, a small word when you use a big one? <laughs> well, the, it, do you want to say at the end of um, at the beginning of the fourth sentence down um, after? Wall and before Mr. Finch, uh, after wall, say between the house and the pool. Yeah, 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 yeah. Just put that in. And instead of the, in the next sentence, um, Mr. Finch asked for the detailed plans of this wall. That's what we just corrected. One, then. No, well, no, to the first one. Mr. Finch is in there twice? No, no. Miss Scallon's concern of the design is the first one. Oh, okay. Oh, I see. You're you got, right. You got that, Ken? I did. Okay. All right. Um, any other edits, Terry? No. Nope. Allison? Nope. I'm good. I had one on 164 Green Street, which is on... Second page. Second page. Second page. The... Um, in the section on Green Street, the one, two, three, four, fifth line, the end of that, the line it says, Mr. Tyrone asked both catch basins be protected. I'm not sure what that means. Two in the street. Ah. So, Mr. Tyrone asked that both? Yeah. Just add that? Okay. All right. Well, um, in the street, yeah, yeah, that 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 was what I wasn't sure about. Yeah, basins in the street. Okay, that's all. I had. Is that anything else? Okay, uh, Will, do you have any edits, comments? No. No. Okay, uh, motion to approve the minutes as drafted was made. Was there a second? There was. Uh, there was a second. All those in favor? Okay. Opposed? None. All right. For the minutes. Uh, motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Second. All those in favor. All right. Done. Yeah, right. Wasn't wasn't eleven thirty or twelve. Midnight. See. Oh, I like your choice of pens. Aren't they nice? What do you got? Harvard Pilgrim. Harvard Pilgrim. Yeah. <laughs>